boy, John, you look like you might not. You might die, brother. You might not make it. Is that what you were smiling at, Nick? Yeah. yeah. Are you ready? It's another edition of KFC Radio on the Barstool Sports Network. It's KFC in Feidelberg, and your boy Fights is down bad right now. He looks like uh, he looks like you're when you're trying to make yourself have a double chin and you pull your fucking neck back, <laughs> and you got a fat chipmunk face. Except that's just his face right now. What do you got? Tonsillitis? You got you got uh, swollen lymph nodes? You got? Bro, I, I went to a clinic, so I don't know what I have. They yeah. just they were just like here's medicine, and then I was like, well, what if this doesn't work? And they're like, well, then you should probably see a doctor. doctor." Yeah, see, the rise, I don't know if this has been a thing forever or not, but the rise of the clinic, they've had a million names. They used to be Doc in a Box, now they're Minute Clinics, then they're Apple Med, West Med, all this shit. I don't know if this is common, Maybe maybe I just sound like an idiot, but when people ask me, like, do you have a doctor? I'm like, no, bro. I go to the place next to Dwayne Reed. Like, I just right. go to this <laughs> fake ass little place where I, I'm the person I'm talking to, I don't even know if they have a medical degree. Yeah. And they and that and they're there to prescribe penicillin for fucking STDs. That's what's going on. <laughs> it, it, it's a true clinic in the sense that it's just there for your dick and, and your vagina. But that, that's where and, I go and, and anytime and I'm sick. Test. Yeah, and COVID. Yeah, yeah. like like the, I, like they're like, you might have COVID. I was like, well, I don't know. I got both vaccines. Yeah, probably and, not, idiot. I was like, I, I was like, I was like, I don't, I didn't even know this was a symptom of COVID, like sore throat. That doesn't make any sense. But they were like, like when I asked, I was like, so what if this doesn't work? And she just, she was just immediately, she's like, go to the emergency room for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love when it's like, I am, I cannot help you at all. Yeah. Like, like, when, like the idea that like people, or when you're filling out forms and shit. And they're like, who's your like family practitioner or your your whatever the words are, your like your your regular doctor or whatever. I'm like, bro, what? I haven't <laughs> done that. Like, I don't go to the dentist. I don't have a pediatrician that I've been going to since I was like 10. I just, you know, find a clinic when I need something. That's really I have like emergencies, you know, I have like surgeons and I have fake doctors at the clinic that's yeah. that's the life of of everybody in the city i don't know if you know you're in the burbs maybe you got to go to like a actual medical practice but the rest of us we're just going to strangers on the corner <laughs> my, my mom was surprised when i called her and i was on the way to the clinic and she's like you don't have a doctor yet it's, and i was like what like, you, like, you've been there for five years i was like lady do you think i'm going to the doctor behind your back <laughs> like if i if i made it if i got a fucking uh, uh, general practitioner, and I was going to doctor's appointments. I would be screaming that from the rooftop. Yeah, street. like I would be, I would be telling you. I'd be so proud. Your 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 boy's an adult, but guess what? I'm not. So now I just fucking go to a clinic down the street. Yeah, I, I, that's like I can't even imagine that there's real doctors. Those in between no, doctors just, even exist. She was like, she was like Doctor House, but like the opposite, where he it was. House House just does like broad spectrum antibiotics all the time, and she was like, because I guess actually I guess very very similar to House. She just gave me a million medicines. She was like, take them all. She was like, just take all these. She was like, this one's a steroid. This one's a pill. This one's a shot. This is like we're just gonna try everything. I was like, all right, let's just do it. I, I, I swear I, I, these I, people don't even have degrees. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear that was like a, a dermatologist or something. You know, like, I don't fucking know about swollen tonsils. I'm here for, like, acne, dude. <laughs> is it is it a sore throat or is it, like, you have, are your tonsils fucked? You have your tonsils? I even, Kevin, I don't even know what my tonsils are. Yeah, are I, 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 feel like I, ha- I feel like most people, you think more people have their tonsils or don't have their tonsils? Mm, have. Have? What about wisdom yeah. teeth? You think more people have wisdom teeth than don't have wisdom teeth? Don't have. I feel like um, adult tonsils are a problem. If your t- if your tonsils get fucked up when you're an adult, I feel like they're like an emergency. Where are they? Are they here? They're yeah. They're they're like, but they're. I think when you get when you have tonsillitis, when it's real bad, they touch. They almost like close up your throat. Like so, yeah. it's like it's like inside your throat. It's not you know. Bro, they never even your mouth. checked my tonsils. They didn't do that. What? Did they look at your throat? No. What? Don't you have a sore throat? Very. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. They didn't put a tongue depressor in no, there. No, 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 no. They did one of those things. Oh, they so they did look in your throat. But well, they they did like they they tested. They didn't look at it. like I I had to be like, 
As I look, my my face is really swollen. Yeah, you look like a fat fucking chipmunk right now. Yeah, and they were like, "Go to like, the YouTube and watch." You got to see John's aesthetic for this. It it's just it's, ugly. It's like it's bad. It hurts really bad. <laughs> yeah. I can't even eat. I can't open my mouth. This sucks. Yeah, no, that these sound terrible. Uh, the last thing in the world you want to do is a podcast. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, you know what? I, you know, this is this is for everybody who like always makes fun of us when we claim that this job is hard and and all that. It's like, well, today's gonna really suck for you now, John. But it's brought to you by Money Lion. Look, shit happens sometimes in life, especially in sports. You get some curveballs thrown to you. You get a TKO. You get a buzzer beater. Uh, your car wrecks on the final lap. Broken noses. Bad bets. Uh, and even a white Ford Bronco that can interrupt the Knicks when they're actually winning in the fucking finals back in 1990. Fucker. In sports, just like life, you never know when shit's going to happen. But when it does, you can take it like a champ because now there's banking that comes with a safety net from Money Lion. Money Lion is an award-winning digital banking app that offers interest-free cash advances and the ability to build a rainy day fund with roundups into your Money Lion investment account. Now you can access, visualize, and build up all your funds for all of life's surprises all in one app. This is a fucking great point, man. I feel like I'm always like, all right, I can't like I'm gonna get my bonus and then I'll be able to pay off my credit card debt and I'll be able to pay for the kids tuition and then I'm set like then then my big expenses are gone and everything else is like going to be you know straight to the savings account and then like this the car breaks and then this happens and then that happens like shit is always popping up where it's like I just never I feel like life all of life is just one of those it has been this many days since the big accident, and I'm just constantly flipping it back to zero. So you never really know. Like, bills just keep on piling up. Like we said, it costs $100 to just go outside. So you're going to need money. You're going to need that, that rainy day fund. Round up and save some money. Get the cash advances when you need it interest-free. Just think of Money Line as the big bag of ice after a wreck or the friend that has your back when life decides to pick a fight. So go to Money Lion right now. Bank, borrow, invest, and grow all in one app. Go to the App Store and download it today, Money Lion. Uh, we got Will Compton on the show, the boy Will Compton from Bussin. Um, we're going to talk. We'll do some uh, voicemails, of course. We got our top five in a moment. Before Feidelberg, uh, maybe this is maybe you got sick because you uh, maybe the world has been you know so sheltered and separated that you went to the garden and got crammed in there with twenty thousand people and you got also I bet you everybody's walking out of there sick because you haven't been around that many people in two years. Yeah, that was that honestly that's probably it. No, like, no, I'm not even kidding. It's like they said how much the flu went down during the past eighteen months because nobody was transmitting a regular disease. I right. bet you being back at the Garden, fights went to the first concert back at MSG, Foo Fighters. Big hubbub in the office, by the way. Glenny Balls, none too pleased that it was not Billy Joel reopening the Garden. And oh, I got to really? be honest, <laughs> I got to be honest, it kind of should have been Billy Joel. Yeah, I, I get that argument. That's okay. Yeah, That's not and he's I mean, not, not – I, I thought it was like he'll be there this weekend. He's not there until November. So, like, that was – that. it should have been Billy – but it was, I mean, you can't really complain. It's not that, like they put some scrubs up there. It was Foo Fighters, and the big uh, big bring out, the big surprise guest was Dave Chappelle, which the place went bananas. bananas, I'm sure. I was thinking, I was thinking like, oh, big, big guest from Foo Fighters. Maybe it is Billy Joel, or maybe it's Jay-Z, or some New York staple, or some musical icon. Nope, it's a guy who doesn't make music at all. It's just Dave Chappelle, which I think... <laughs> Like, I would rather see that, you know, I don't care about, like, when you go to a concert, you want to see a good show, you want to, like, hear the music, and it's cool when they can put on a good display, but also, I'd rather, I don't care if you can sing or not, I'd rather bring out, like, I don't know, Ryan Reynolds is here, I'd be like, oh, fucking cool, Ryan Reynolds is here, I don't give a shit if you can sing or not, we bring out the cast of Always Sunny, all right, fucking great, so yeah, Chappelle gets the pop of the night, and then it's, sings. It's, it's hard to, to, like, creep the song I think anyone can sing. Well, okay, two things. First of all, did you know that this is Chappelle's like go-to move? No. He has done this with Ed Sheeran. He has done this with Bradley Cooper, with Lenny Kravitz, with John Mayer, with Erica Badu. He's done this in a strip club. He's done this on stage at parties. This great song? Always radio, always creep by Radiohead. It's like his <laughs> karaoke. It's like his party trick. Like You know, there's the guy who can wrap his dick around his wrist like a watch. Dave yeah. Chappelle's party trick is that he sings... Creep by Radiohead. 
And apparently, I didn't put this in my one minute man because I couldn't find any proof of it. But according to Dante, they were both once on the, the Howard Stern show, which again, I can't find any record of this. I'm sure if I searched Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl, Dave Chappelle, or Howard Stern, it would pop up. It didn't. But he claims that Dave Grohl and Dave Chappelle were once talking. Dave Chappelle made fun of him and like his crowds for being too white. And Dave Grohl was like, fine, next show you can come on and you can fucking rap or something. And he was like, no, 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 I'll come on stage, but I'm going to do Radiohead. And, and that was like a couple of years ago. So Dante was like, this was years in the making. But I think it's more, it's apparent that he just, if he's not doing comedy, he's singing Creep. <laughs> now, the other thing I was going to say, though, is, you know, you just said everybody can sing Creep. I, I mean, I know if you asked me, like, what's a Radiohead song? I would have said Creep. I don't know this song one bit. You don't know. Oh, I don't I, first know. First of all, Creep. I thought it was. I thought it was Nine Inch Nails in the moment. Um, I, I okay. That confused. Didn't you? Did you tweet that? I deleted. It. Okay, yeah. you do, I, I caught it at first, and I was like, I was like, did he do two songs? Because I saw people saying Radiohead, and then he said Nine Inch Nails. You were all backwards. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah but I don't know that. It's very Nine Inch Nailsy song. Yeah, definitely. I think I. Uh, that's that's a a normal mix up in my mind. If if you don't know that music all that well, to me, like '90s kind of like hardcore rock type of like alternative shit i think of nine inch nails and radiohead is very very similar the uh, uh it, it was funny though i don't really know the foo fighters i just went for the experience yeah like i obviously know some foo fighters songs but sure. like i i you know the singles right i, I probably I, I okay i'm gonna try and name radiohead song, uh foo fighters songs right now um, oh i can't do it <laughs> people could be mad about this one but uh this is this the look into the sky to save me. Looking for the kind of light. That one. Um, What's the one where they go, that says the best? Is that best of me or something? Yeah, best of yeah, you. That's the one. You. That's the one I know. I, I was. People dude, are I probably swear. puking right now. Foo Fighter fans are like, they're like soccer fans. They're like, you know, they get Probably. fucking. And I, I don't know them, but I, I respect I like them. them. Don't like, get me wrong. Yeah. I'm not like I'm, I'm not saying they stink. I, I, I very much enjoy the Food Fighters. Yeah. I just don't listen to them that much. I don't know. I don't know their catalog. That right. Much. And I, and I, I mean, I don't feel like you need to know them or listen to them all the time to just know that Dave Grohl is the fucking man. To right. when, when you, I think, I think in music, it's super rare. John Mayer's kind of doing it right now with the Dead, and. Anybody who's been in a band and then gone solo kind of does it. But I feel like Dave Grohl is almost like Kurt Warner, like going to the Super Bowl with different franchises. Yeah, being yeah, yeah. being in Nirvana and like the drummer in Nirvana and the front man of Foo Fighters is like, oh, yeah, you are that fucking dude. And I've always heard good stories about him. He just seems like one of the guys who does celebrity life the right way. So I just think of them as like the only and last like big time rock band that you know it's not pop and it's not new age shit it's just like guitars drums front man long hair like rock music so even though i don't know them or love them i i feel like they're they're you can still like really respect them yeah for sure there was they were they, they are actually like the last like definitely the last like who was the last band that's what i mean like i i, I you know when i was thinking when we we did that arguments thing about like can you be a a a, a rock band that doesn't trash a hotel room or a country singer that can't drive a stick and i was yeah. trying to think of like bands to talk about and i was like the only like rock band is really in my mind them yeah. uh like the like i guess like the killers but they don't think of them as i don't know yeah, like for some reason rock. i think yeah they're like a little bit poppy they're a little bit like folksy at times folk music -y. Uh, yeah to me it's just like the foo fighters and i feel like they're the they're, they're the band that wouldn't trash a hotel room though Right, you know, like, but they're still, you know, they're it. They're the last ones, but they're like kind of nice. But, uh, but was Chappelle was like the the moment of the night? I'm sure. I, I was, you know, someone who has a better, again, better knowledge of their catalog would probably say a different song was right. But like, I mean, I was rocking out the whole night, but I wasn't really singing along because I don't yeah. really know most of the words. But um, dude, that's an awkward but, spot to be in. You had a good time doing that. I would just be. I feel like when I'm there and I don't know, it's you know, we've talked about this before. The concert is the average white man's predator. It's the average <laughs> white man's kryptonite where it's like, you know, you're not a hot chick who can just shake her ass. You don't know how to, like, dance. You don't have rhythm, especially if you're at a rap concert. You know, you can't even say half the words. You don't fit in. But if you don't know, even know the words, what are you doing? You're just Rock, rock's easier. Yeah, rock's easier. I guess rock you gotta, it's headbanging. Head, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, rock, rock. I, I took care of pretty well, easy. I, I, I never felt awkward or weird last night. I had a, like I saw like Jay Z at Fenway. That I was awkward. I, I saw. Uh, yeah, was, was that with uh, with Timberlake? Yeah, yeah. I, I did the the New York one of that tour. Yo, I, I won like being... three nights in a row. It was weird. <laughs> it's too much. That's a lot. Of much. <laughs> uh, it wasn't like you know. I'm not like a diehard for either of them. It was just like it was there. It was in Boston. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, that yeah. that was uh, like a. When Jay Z and Eminem were here, and when Jay Z and Timberlake were here, that was like a social thing. It was like, yeah, yeah, do exactly. you have tickets? Who do you know who has tickets? How many nights are you going? Um, was it like, uh, was it a weird like when it first started? Were they talking about COVID? Were they talking about like return of music? Were people geeking out, or was it just like because people were talking about it like you know, like it was a watershed moment in history, like the return of music and i was like i don't know if there's if there's one thing that i feel like has minimized and i and i, and I say that word very lightly because i know it's still a serious situation but the return to regular life has been so like normal that right. i think it's kind of minimized like the hysteria of covid so i feel like i would just be like yeah we, just, we went to a concert it's back we do concerts yeah I, I don't think they i don't recall them making i look so fat i don't recall them making like a <laughs> you, mass you look like they like when they do those apps like when you when like ken, <laughs> when ken jack comes around with a picture and takes a, a photo of just your face and you know you're about to be fat and old that's you just but that's just your face bro it's not enough. you can just talk, you can feel them so slow yeah um, but the uh I was going to say, I, I don't think they overdid it. I don't think yeah. they made a massive deal of it. I think it was, they definitely mentioned it. They, I, I don't think, I wasn't in there. I was I was a little late, so I wasn't there for the first show. It was, dude, getting a fucking ticket on Ticketmaster is a goddamn nightmare. 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 Like, because I had to keep making accounts and logging in. I think I bought three tickets. <laughs> And, and I just that would get be it. the most vital break thing ever. Dude dropped like seven hundred dollars of tickets just to get it in one. In the building. It, it was there was me and Nate and like Nate. So it was actually Nate was one by him, and he he somehow I stood in line to get Frankie Brelly a t shirt, which I might have oh, lost. Wow, um, what a wait, friend no, you are! I'll be honest. Somebody asked me to do that. I'm like, if it's if it takes me under three minutes, I'll do it. Otherwise, I, I offered him. I, I texted him. I knew. I know. He oh, wow. Was, what a uh, friend. What a friend. Um, so I was in line getting I was in line getting the fucking T-shirts. I get there. I was going to get myself one, too. I get there. I didn't have any of my size left. So I got Nate and Smitty. I'm sorry. Nate and uh, a Frankie a T-shirt. And then by the time I get out of line, Nate's like, I'm just, I went inside. And I'm like, well, I don't have a ticket, man. You have a ticket. <laughs> and, and, so you had so, to buy one? So, so no, so then I was like, it just kept being like, he ended up, I think he bought more because like wow. he kept trying to transfer me the tickets and it was just ticket masters would be like, nah, you can't do that. Mm, and like, that it was, honestly, if I, like, I was asking people at ticket windows, I'm like, can you help? They're like, nope, that's a third party. We don't do that shit. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, I like, it says right here, I have a ticket. Like, can I just go in? And they're like, no, nah, you can't do that. No. It was like, honestly, probably took me an hour to get in. <laughs> and um, that too, I would have given up a, for a band that I don't really know. I would have been like, okay, I'm out of here. I, I texted Nate three different times. I was like, yo, I'm just going to split. He's like, no, 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 I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Yeah. Um, but I it was, for it sure would have gone home. So, so I, I don't know what they, I don't know what they opened the show talking about, but by the time I got I, in there, I, they, I saw one clip, he said like he did something where he, they finished the lyrics for him or they shouted something back at him. And he just said, God damn, I missed that attention. <laughs> Which is probably so true for the mega famous people. Like we heard it all all COVID long from the comics that we interview, how they realize how much of like a void in their life it was not being able to go on stage. And I think that was like because of their craft and their work, but also because they were used to like seven nights a week having adoring fans suck their dick. And if you're right. a band like Foo Fighters, who you're used to getting, you know, 50,000 people chanting your name a few times a week and you all of a sudden that's gone, it's probably a problem, man. It's probably like <laughs> like like a, your, your brain is not right without it. Yeah, uh, you definitely, you're definitely missing a certain serotonin or dopamine. Right, for sure. And then, uh, but so for you, Chappelle was the, the moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole thing was, it was, it was all yeah. great. It was really, really fun. I, I had an absolute blast at it. Like, again, I'm not the if, biggest. If you could hard, have but. one person come out, musical or otherwise uh at your let's say you're at your favorite concert and they bring a person out doesn't have to be a singer who would who would you want all right that's a, um it's a good ati question who do you want your surprise it's almost like wrestling you know what like everybody should have their own theme music the way wrestlers do for their life 
Like, imagine yeah. that if 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 Dave Chappelle, like, if if you heard like, ladies and gentlemen, and you heard like Chappelle show, Chappelle show, <laughs> I was like, what? Your theme music drops and you make an appearance. I would fucking love that. Everywhere Stone Cold goes, the glass breaks. People know. It would it would be someone who doesn't fit. Like, yes, honestly, I agree. Weirdly, the first person came to mind, and it's probably only because I've seen he's done like two separate shows with weird bands that were both sick. Kendrick Lamar. Really? Kendrick Lamar did what was it? Oh wait, no, it wasn't Kendrick Lamar. You look it. so fat <laughs> when you when you look up like that. It just it looks like Dennis when he's when he's the the sex offender and always sunny. <laughs> it makes no sense. It's crazy. Put your put your chin on like this. Look up. <laughs> you can see it. You really oh, can. You know what? You should you should like use one of those rollers and like I think it's filled up. I think it's got fluid. You got to like push it out. It's very full. Does of fluid. It, does it hurt? Oh, it hurts immensely. To, to the, like, you can't push it because I think like, you... Oh yeah, I can't. I can't open my mouth. <laughs> oh, oh like... immensely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's keep it moving then. Uh, so a uh, a dream moment for Robbie and and I think Chuck out there at uh, seeing Foo Fighters and Dave Chappelle come out. An absolute nightmare moment for the Sixers fans here at Barstool Sports. Roan Smitty. And Fran, not only do the Sixers lose Game 7, not only is it the end of the process, not only is the window shut and it's pretty much a wrap, but all the while for their game why, watch. Why, why is that? Why is the process over? Yeah. They have three max contracts like Ben Simmons. They, 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 I mean, you know. We were joking around about restarting the process, just trade everybody for a bunch of picks and start the process over again. But if people don't want Ben Simmons and his contract and people are not going to want Tobias's contract and you, you still you still got Embiid. But the whole idea was always saying super lean young guys that aren't that are on their rookie contract. And if they haven't proven themselves, ship them out of town for more picks until you amass like the right guys. And, and then you go all in with it. They kind of went all in. They gave the max contracts out, and it's not only did it not work this year, it's very clear that, like, you know, it's not just like, oh, we fell short. It's like, oh, Ben Simmons is afraid to shoot a basketball. Tobias Harris <laughs> is nowhere close to a max contract, and Embiid is a big man, so he can't really play, like, by himself in today's world. So it's not, like, done, but it's not. They're not, you know, they used to be, like, so set for the future, and the future is bright. Now it's more like you're going to have to – make a you know square peg in a round hole to try to pull this thing out but not only is that all that on the court happening off the court during the electric chair what i'm saying is the worst electric chair moment of all time i think trista crick xena warrior princess screaming in smitty's ear talking shit to roan and fran the whole time just laughing it up i can't think of a worse i mean she's been going at it with them like all year and it, this this would be like if she was like Tuka Rask sucks. She right. was on the other side of that all year long, and you were arguing for him, and then you get bounced, and she's at Borelli's screaming in your ear. As bad as all those other goons were, imagine if it was Trista in your ear hole. I I listen. I, I said it on the rundown, and I'll say it again. People were like, "Oh, you can't say that." I would have hit Trista. I would have hit her <laughs> if she was screaming in my ear. I wouldn't have closed fist punched her, but I would have face mushed her. I would have given one of like, "Get out of my face!" Screaming it, in someone's I, ear like that is almost like fucking hitting somebody. That's like I, I I can't be held responsible for my involuntary reaction in that in that moment. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Just that like, I had to, get you know, that's right. I had to get physical. Yeah, I, 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 more restraint than I ever could imagine from Smitty in that situation. <laughs> uh, now it was a lot of Trista haters out there, and I hate to break it to you, if you are a Trista hater, this is Portnoy's dream. Like he just, he just found a new foil to Smitty. You know, he loved Smitty versus Spider Monkey, and that kind of died out. He's gonna keep Trista around forever now just to continue to harass Smitty, who he doesn't like. So, I mean, he loved every second of it. He called it, he opened up his live stream talking about it today. Like, anybody who was like, oh, like, she's done here, don't worry. Oh, no, no, no. Lifetime contract for Trista Crick now. Because Portnoy just loves a whack pack who, who bothers the people that he doesn't like. And Trista's going to bother Smitty for the rest of his life. It is. 
I, I, he 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 really had to get pissed off. That was the only that was the only <laughs> move. You had to. It was. I, I so badly wanted to get physical when I was dealing with the, those guys after the Islanders game, uh, but I was like, I was on the side of a highway. This you were, you could just pick just up, put it through a tape. Just could right. you got to throw it right out the window of the Philly house, just right onto the streets of Philadelphia and let those people deal with her. See you later. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's true. You should have put out a sign, and marched around town. Honestly, if if if, if like like uh, in Die Hard with a Vengeance, when he's got to walk around Harlem with the sandwich board around him, yeah, if yeah, If you put yeah. her out on the street with a shirt that just said "I am Trista Crick from Barstool Sports," uh, she wouldn't walk out alive. She'd be dead right now today. Ben yeah. Simmons has was a balloon hands or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just you know, one of the worst trolls, but but in the end, it ends up being the best troll ever. I think it might be. You know, I, I had my uh, my uh, Connor Gillespie moment. Uh, I had a moment la this year with the Jets when they won a game on the rundown on the electric chair. I haven't had many opportunities. I've had a couple heartbreaks, but I haven't just had many games to even sit in on. What is was this your worst electric chair moment this year? Uh, this one it didn't really happen because like like game seven so was the, the, the the game six was we were at like so I, I wasn't really on it that much yeah we were yeah. at the college game and you couldn't really get that I don't, i've never gone back to watch it but right no it, it, it didn't have the same juice as borelli's it, yeah and then borelli's wasn't that bad because i always like, it's why i was like laughing when mr probably would like spike a shot in my face like i didn't care because i was like the Bruins are winning the series so it gives a yeah shit. Like, it was also so I, I didn't, it's tough like mr borelli it's an enjoyable thing. It's like you're almost ha you're almost happy for this guy who's like living out this dream of like he, you know what I mean. Like I would have been as mad as I would have been. Have it being Mr. Borelli in your face is a billion times better than having it be Trista in your face. Oh, uh, absolutely. And, and like it, I did start to. I was never angry at Mr. Borelli, but like when it started, I was angry just at the world. Yeah. When like during Game Six, when it started to sink in, like oh fuck, oh, it's we, not, are, yeah. we are going to lose the series. Yeah. Like, that, this, I, it had never crossed my mind until like middle of Game Six. Right. I was like, the Bruins are a bad team. Like we're just gonna, we're going to win the series, and uh, so like it was like easy to laugh and stuff like that. But the, I mean, this it, it, it's it could not be anyone. <laughs> it's worse. the it's, like, it's the worst. I mean. Uh, uh, my list of people, it, uh, you know, Dave is kind of like number one. When Dave, it, it, it it's it's gonna be funny, like the the final chapter of Barstool or these later days of Barstool, where like Dave has gone on to such a different level that like nobody is gonna remember or know the new people who know Dave aren't gonna know about like his quote unquote rivalry with me when it comes to like the Jets and the Pats and my teams versus his teams and him versus Shea and all this shit. But there was a time where it was like that's that was the the storyline always was he hey. laughed at me and like the worst thing I could think of was losing a game to him. Um, so like he'll still always have like the crown, but like Frank, Frank for me, I said on, we got to believe I'm not, if the Mets make it to the playoffs, I'm not watching a game with him. I will just decline. I will tell Dave. No, <laughs> I'm not. I am not doing it. I'm not going to trust to crick myself. I will not be Smitty. And it's weird because Frank is technically on the same side as me, <laughs> but I, I won't subject myself to that because I can't, I won't let myself get cricked. Because I mean, imagine imagine if I tried to get physical with Frank. Imagine if he was screaming at me and I tried to like fight Frank. Imagine me pushing Frank around. We can't have that. One person told him to shut up, and it was like the Ooh, end of the world. Matt, oh, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I was kind of just thinking about it for my own personal enjoyment. Like the Mets are so rarely in the playoffs, and if they do make it, I think they have a good chance to make some noise. So I'm not going to ruin this by sitting and watching with Frank. But now, now thinking about, I'm not even allowed to like clap back at him, or people are going to tell me that I'm like. I don't know, like, I don't, I don't even know, like, like, I need to handle him with kid gloves, fuck that, not doing it, will not let myself get Fleming to the same way that Smitty got cricked. That, that is, that, that, that whole saga was some serious, like, I miss the old Barstool shit, oh. like, like, we're getting mad at people for bullying now? For, for people who don't know that, because it didn't quite pop, um, Smith, Nate was playing cornhole with Frank, and, like, Frank had his fucking meltdown, because like, he's, oh, I'm 0 and 900, nothing ever goes well for me. Like, join, welcome to the fucking party, dude. And uh, and Nate was like, "Why are we treating this guy like a baby? Just be an adult." That's all he said. No, 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 you gotta have a couple breaths. Just a couple breaths and reset, reset. We need everything to reset. You know, Nate, that's why. Hey, 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 h
and people were like, how dare you say that, Nate? Because because what? Because Frank is like weird and eccentric. He can't take like any sort of criticism or any sort of like ball busting. Like, yeah, old Barstool, like – I mean, bullying. The, the old, got mad about bullying. Dude, the, the things that would have been said about about him in the old days, like, come on, man, <laughs> like, give me a fucking break. So I, I, I like Frank. I've had I've had good experiences with Frank. I've had a great time at a hockey game with him. I've also been annoyed by Frank. That shouldn't be a controversial statement. No, I mean, that's <laughs> that's pretty much everyone's existence with Frank Fleming is like, yeah, I've had some enjoyable moments. And then I've had some moments where he drives you absolutely crazy. And I think Frank would know that and understand that. I think that's pretty much everyone's experience with everybody. With everybody. Yeah, with the <laughs> whole fucking world. Uh, so who would be at Barstool and then also in, in just like if you could pick like the worst person in the world, period. Like you could pick like Frank Fleming for me. Also, I think it would be absolutely horrendous. And this is not political. So don't make it one. Don't make it that way. But like if if I was an electric chair with like Tucker Carlson. And he was like, a, 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 if, if the Mets were playing like the Dodgers in the NLCS and Tucker Carlson was a Dodgers fan, like chirping at me, I don't think I'd be able to handle that. <laughs> what made you think? It's I don't Tucker know. Carlson? It just, I was just thinking, who's like the most annoying person? I could see him just like, like eating like popcorn, just like, nah, 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 and like trying to, and trying to <laughs> talk about baseball, like, like, like he talks about anything else. And I just like, shut the fuck up, Tucker, in his little bow tie. You know what I mean? I, I think I would just go <laughs> bananas. I would lose my fucking mind. Bring in Frank. Get Tucker out of here. <laughs> but Trist is up there, man. Even, you know, I don't even have a, a beef with her as far as like Simmons and the Sixers the way Smitty did. But I, it would be hard. It, you'd be hard pressed to find someone at Barstool who's more, who's worse than that. Because there's a level of like deserving it, you know? Like when you go up against, if you, if you can, you know, it sounds funny using that terminology, but like you go up against a Barstool personality in these things. And, you know, if it's an OG or someone who's done a lot of work here or been ar around a while, there's almost like a mutual handshake at the end, like the hockey teams do. And yeah. that, but not with Tristan. People would be like, no, fuck that. I, like, Dude, you, you say old school bars, so mine, one of mine might be gas. Oh, that's tough. Playoff Pauly. Play, like, Pauly playoffs, watching watching a hockey game with Pauly playoffs would be, because he's an anti too. And he, he's only anti-Tuka. Right. He wants the bees to win, but he hates Tuka. He, he doesn't have an actual take on Tuka. No. He just, he just starts it, pot. I'm just fucking with John. Yes. So I, I do a good job at ignoring it on Twitter. But if we were in the same room. Face to face. Hands would be thrown. Oh. And, yeah, that's a guy who I think you could. You, you should be able to fight him, you know? Yeah. Like, throw throw some hands. Not doesn't have to be like a rough and rowdy thing. It can just be a one time in the moment, you know? I, I said if Smitty had just done the – Done the Dave Chappelle, Howard Dean, <laughs> uppercut, just boom, right then and there. I, you know, I, I know that's not allowed, but I don't think there is a jury alive that would convict. I think they'd be like, well, but did you see? Did you did see you the just, scream? I mean, just, just a scream. Just a I mean, ah, like not a word, not a phrase, not a thing. Just loud decibels in your fucking eardrum, in like what's arguably the worst moment of your. I mean, they were talking about, you know, is this worse? Than like losing uh, when you had McNabb in the playoffs. Like, is this worse than they were? They were, they were throwing out. Somebody said it's worse than the Joe Carter walk off. Like, really bad. Ow! I know. I mean, well, well. Here's the here's the how. Because I know Joe Carter was like you know in the World Series final game, so obviously a bit different. But if you had told the Sixers fans, you've got to get through the Bucks and then either the Suns or the Clippers to win the title. You would be saying, like, this is our best chance at an NBA championship maybe fucking ever. And all right. you got to do to get through, to get, you know, to the Bucks is get through Kevin Herter and the fucking Hawks. They would be salivating. So it's, it's you know. Who left Bucks, Hawks, Clippers, Suns? Cl Clippers, Suns in the Western Conference, Bucks, Hawks. It's crazy. Yeah. It's three teams that have never won a title and one team, like, not since 1965 or something. So it's like the NBA's quote unquote nightmare in terms of classic franchises. Although, you know, there's a whole new young crop of superstars and people are going to get exposure to all these new teams. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. But yeah, if you get, you know, if it's Atlanta versus Phoenix in the title, oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely gruesome. I heard, I don't know if this is true or not. I love Kevin Herter now, the, the white boy ginger on the, on the Hawks. And I don't I know, know. He, he's like, I mean, bright orange hair paler than you are 
and he put up like 29 points last night, just lights out. And I don't know if it's I, I, somebody I was tagged in some conversation, so I don't know if it's his actual like widespread um, nickname, but somebody said that they call him Red Velvet because Red Velvet's still actually a, a chocolate cake, but on the out, <laughs> but on the outside it's red. So like he's this he's this kid who can ball. So black people fuck with him, but he's this white boy ginger. So he's Red Velvet. So uh, yeah, I mean I don't know an all time bad electric chair villain troll moment. So. Tweet at us, I guess, with your your worst combos for at Barstool and just life in general. Who would be the worst person to kick you while you're down during a uh, a big loss for your team? Um, we'll do our top fives while we're speaking about getting kicked while you're down. Johnny is down and out, so today we're gonna do top five things. I keep his, I don't know if you've noticed it. I just keep moving. I know. I'm trying to find a place to be comfortable. I know. You go up, you go down. I feel like when you sit down, you like get more congested. You stand up. I don't know. You're just moving. We're going to we're gonna get through this, Johnny. We're going to rip through this, babe. <laughs> Top five um, things to do when you're sick. Top five things you like to do. Top five things that alleviate the sickness just top five things when you're sick it's brought to you by free fly and an important thing when you are down and out is to be comfortable get in your comfortable clothes and the thing about free fly is whether you are sick on the couch or whether you are out hunting hiking uh out there in the wilderness or you're just going to the office going to the bar whether you are uh up and about or down and out, Free Fly is comfortable for all those occasions. They make their shirts out of bamboo somehow. They're stretchy and soft and comfortable. They make um, pants that you could wear to like the golf course, uh, you know, that have like, you know, for your belt loops and they button up and they zipper. They've also got um, pants of the same color and material that are kind of more like athletic pants, like windbreaker type pants that are soft material. So whether you are uh, an outdoorsman or an indoorsman, Free Fly has got you covered. It's one of my favorite clothing lines. I, I wear their hats. I rock their Henleys, their T-shirts, all the whole nine, uh, and the pants too. So you can get 20% off now when you go to freeflyapparel.com slash KFC. You know, this always, this always jumped out at me. Free Fly, they have the bamboo clothes that have the SPF shirts. Like you really believe yeah, yeah, yeah. you really believe you can get a sunburn through your shirt. Dude, the Is that fucking, possible? The the doctor today just told me that. She just offered that advice. Oh, I was gonna say, does this have something to do with like being sick? Nope. Like Nope, she just goes, You might want to look into SPF shirts. Uh -huh. like, are you are you well, I guess you're just pale as fuck. Yeah, I'm not sunburned, right? Like what you, what you listen to? <laughs> Mind your fucking business, okay? <laughs> Yo, that might be the, the single most unnecessary thing to – that, that is a true – you should have said, mind your fucking business, lady. It, it, made, it made no sense. It was not applicable to anything. She was getting something out of the cabinet, and she just turns around and goes, you know they make SPF shirts now? You might want to look into those. What? Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? That's, that is preposterous. That's like being like, uh, yeah, you know, they make uh, they make socks with the left and right feet now. You might want to get a pair of those. Like, what? What, what, what does that have to do with anything, lady? Just get me my medicine, Who fake doctor. You a fucking thing. <laughs> well, they got you covered though. Free Fly's got those shirts as well. Freeflyapparel.com slash KFC for twenty percent off. Top fives thing to do when you're sick, Johnny. Since you are sick, you you can go first. What's something you've been doing, maybe? I haven't started it yet, but once I'm done with this, it starts. Watch Harry Potter. Wow. Is that the go-to? You watch all eight Every, of them? Whenever I'm sick, I just watch Harry Potter all day. And wow. I, I mean, the thing is, if you can if you can make it through eight Harry Potters, you're sick, bro. You know, it's like yeah. it's it's like, oh fuck, this is this is like a full like forty eight hour bug because it's been a day and I'm still not right. <laughs> I, I've I've said it before. I do try and get through all. Well, they're, they're all like two plus hours, right? So you're probably pushing about 24 hours. There's eight of them, I believe. It, I believe it's like 28 hours. I'm 22 hours and something. Minutes. Yeah, I could see it just I being think, under 22, 24. That makes I sense. I think that's what it is. Um, but I've tried. I've never gotten. I fell asleep like during the eighth one one time. That was the closest I ever got. And that it gives you your comfort while you're sick, huh? Very much so. I'm gonna go a throwback. I'm gonna go cliche, but it's got to go number one for me. And it's it's not it's not something that happens now, but it's something that happened for the first you know 15, 20 years of your life. And of course, it's the Price Is Right. It's it's uh, and it's not just the Price Is Right. You can throw in make a deal, right? Make a deal. Let's make a let's deal. make a deal. Um, or like the daytime talk shows or People's Court. 
uh, um, family feud. Like there's just there's this whole world when you're when you're sick and you're in school age, you realize there's this whole world that you didn't know existed, and it's all like stay at home moms and sick kids and grandmas and shit. The people who just don't go anywhere during the day, and it's like oh, the television actually works between these hours. <laughs> like there's actually programming on, and of course the Price is Right, specifically Bob Barker was always king of that that time and it's, it's funny because we say it and it's like that it only takes up a smidgier day and then fucking what but there's something about spinning here in the wheel that beep 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 or doing the the showcase uh it's it's the king of sick programming uh number two is making noises just like ah yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Best. Yeah. I for the last like hour before the show started, I was laying on the couch, like basically just exhaling the evil. Yep. I just like uh, get it out, get it out. Yep. <laughs> uh, I, I, like, I I I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback off of that pick with my pick because what the noises does is alerts everybody, and what that does is my pick here. The overall best part of being sick is the sympathy. Getting sympathy <laughs> is my favorite thing in the world. There would be times, I mean, you know, I've had, what, seven surgeries? Every time I, you know, fucked up a neck, a bone, a disc, a, 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 you know, and I was getting surgery, and then everyone's like, oh, man, do you need anything? Can I help you? Oh, do, I'll get that. Don't worry. The amount of, I'd almost be happy when I'm going into surgery because I'm like, I'm not going to have to do shit for six <laughs> to eight weeks, motherfucker. And when you're sick, when you're real sick and someone actually is like there to, to take care of you and you just groan and moan and all that shit and they take care. Oh, th no expectations. No, I'm not doing nothing. Dishes, nothing. That's being sick. <laughs> That's sympathy, baby. The, uh, I, I do think, by the way, I do think that the it, the the making noises. I do think it works. I do think it like makes, expelling it. I think there's medical yeah. there's medical usage to it. Yeah, I think medical applications. If you yeah, know. well, there's got to be a reason why, like we and animals, like moan. You know, when you're yeah. injured or sick, you're like, ah. it's it's, it's like it uh, it's like you know they've done studies on like like weightlifting and like you um. And you lift more weights when people are watching or when music yeah, is Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or when you swear, you, you're stronger and you're tougher when you swear. Really interesting. And yeah, remember they remember there was the one like uh the um what is it the history of swears or whatever on Netflix? Mm -hmm. And then they do that experiment where they put their hand in a bucket of ice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they just like keep fuck, it, it can last longer. And then, and then another one if you keep yep. swearing. Yeah. Like, it, it lasts like it's like their hands went for like 15 seconds without it and like three minutes with it. Yeah, like it was it was a stark difference. Yeah, there, there there's also a study that was done that was like um uh, who was telling me about it? Was it you? No, the st the story of uh, I remember being against it. It was hope. It was like if if you if you have a little bit of hope, it was like if I threw you in the fucking ocean and it was like you got to tread water to survive, and you were like, well, no help's coming, you would die in like five minutes. And if, if I threw you in the ocean and, like, there was a, a boat that would, like, come by every now and then, you could tread water for, like, 35 hours. There was some experiment where it was, like, if you give them even the littlest bit of hope, these rats could tread water for, like, 65 days. I was actually against it because I was like, fuck hope. I don't want hope. I, hope I, 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 that makes sense. Like, your, your body definitely gives up. And like, it's over, whatever. Yeah, there's I mean, just no mind, reason. Mind it. Yeah. <laughs> this, this could be it for John, by the way. This might be his last top five ever. All right, what do you got? Next pick. Um, soup. Mm, great pick. Great pick. I'm going to order some soup. Like, mm -hmm. wow. Yep. Right. Uh, I'll go with my food pick. Uh, drinking ginger ale. G ginger ale is not even a drink to me. Ginger ale is like a, a medicine. It's like an elixir. I, only, I mean, I don't only drink it when I'm sick, but it's definitely a hangover slash sickness. Like when I, when I, especially from like, your, like your, I feel like my grandma would like prescribe it. She'd be like, here's some like, Warm ginger ale with ice with ch ice chips. Can't be regular ice. Got to be ice <laughs> chips. And then you know whether it's placebo or what. All I know is my my fucking stomach was feeling better. It is it is weird. It's like this is like what like Saint Bernard's actually carried in their in their thing. It wasn't whiskey. It was ginger fucking. Ale. I I feel like, like the, the soup is the fo the um, food form of that though. Like I eat soup other times. I very much enjoy soup. Like no matter what the circumstance. But when you're, it's like you can have ginger ale and soup whenever you want. But you have to have those when you're sick. That's kind of, yeah. you know, the Venn diagram of it all. Um, so, yeah, what kind of soup specifically, though? 
Uh, cheeky table. Gotta. Gotta be. Right. Gotta be. Yeah. You're not gonna get lobster bisque when you're sick, you know. It's, it's the it's the broth that you gotta get. So yeah, Lob lobster out. bisque actually stinks even when you're not sick. Lobster bisque is a bad soup. That's you, not you, true. That's silly. Two lobster bisque. There's not enough. Lo there's one little tiny piece of lobster. They really. fucking give well, you lobster. Well, it's it's lobster soup. It's not lobster meat. I know, but there should be more. That's meat. like that's like saying like when you get tomato soup, there's not enough like tomatoes to chew on. It's not how it works. All right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you're we'll wrong. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> You're up. Um, the uh, just sitting in the shower. Mm. Mm. Just sit right on the fucking floor, piss everywhere. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> sitting in your own. John's like nothing like sitting in your own piss when you're sick. It's the best. <laughs> what am I? My fourth pick, Dick. Yeah, but I think you skipped two. We went straight from um, making noises to. John did soup right after. Did you have? Did you snake sympathy? In there? Sympathy. Oh, sympathy. sympathy. Got yeah, it. Yeah. Right. Um, my. Oh, this is this is crazy that this slipped to the fourth pick. Uh, losing weight, baby. Oh yeah, that's a great one. You get a stomach bug and you come out of it like twenty pounds lighter. Oh, there's nothing better than the fucking the the like malaria diet. Give me one of those fucking tapeworms. Give me something where I can't keep anything down for forty eight hours. I'm ready for fucking spring break after that, bitch. <laughs> Dude. All right, I can't leave this one. So this is my fifth. Yep. Excuses. It's uh, so nice. It's so nice to not have to lie. Yeah. It's like you spend so much of your life pretending to be sick to yep. not do stuff. Yeah. And then it's like it's like actually hitting traffic on the way to work. Right. Like, oh. You're like oh, there's actually traffic. There's yeah. a reason. Yeah. So wait. Not... So I guess that that under that umbrella falls like you know sick days like not having to go to work. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. when you no 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 you can no? separate it. Okay. Because then I'm taking sick days. So you're talking about getting out of like social events. I'm talking. About, I mean, I meant like even this like. Like, it was nice to call you and be like, oh, I'm sick. Right. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing about work. Like, getting getting out of school or getting out of work when it's real, when you when you, when you you call up and you're not even putting on a fake voice, you're not even exaggerating, you're just like, yo, boss, I'm fucking sick, and you mean it. And, and honestly, as good of a liar as you might be, people can tell, but your voice when you're actually sick, like, and you know it, you you say it differently. There's, you can't, you can't fake mom, that, you know? When I call my mom before before I called you, <laughs> so weird as the two calls I made. I'm not feeling well. Um, the uh, <laughs> it was uh, she just goes, oh my god, I can smell it. Oh. Like, she's like she's like I can she's like in your voice, like, I can smell. Yeah, your apartment out. must be disgusting when you're sick. <laughs> just the sights and sounds and smells no, that come she, out of you, she, like farts and stuff. She meant, no, like, I know. Like, I this, I guess I, I don't know. I have a weak nose. She has like. She has a weirdly fucking good nose. Like it's infuriating. Like, like, like as a kid, it was very disturbing. Where she would like, she would like walk into a room and be like, Ew, "Who has her shoes off?" I'm like, well, come uh. on, mate. Like, <laughs> um, but the uh, was she like a basset hound or something? Yeah, but she she was like, I could just smell it already. Ugh, disgusting. All right, so let us know your top fives uh, when you're sick. Uh, tweet at us. We'll put out the the the, uh, the graphic. Let us know who won this matchup and tweet us your top five things. Uh, we'll get into our voicemails in a second. First, though, um, Corinna Kopf. No, do I, no, no, I say Kopf, not hard. Do I say the P or not? Kopf. It's just Kopf. Kopf. Do I go poof? Kopf. I'm... From yeah, so who is that? So I know she's the she, only She's Where's in the vlog squad. She's part of David Dobrik's team. So she's okay. just like the fucking super smoke vlogger. She's like 25 years old, blonde, bombshell, super sexy. And I think she's just one of the vloggers who was willing to like put her whole life out there on camera. She's the one. Do you remember when that guy, there was that big controversy, that guy who got spun around on the uh, – yeah. so right before that, a girl grabbed on and she just wanted to like get off the ground a little bit. And Dobrik started to spin her around, and she quickly let go and was like, fuck you, Dobrik. Like, you always take shit too far. You always fuck with me. Like, fuck you. It was that girl. So she's, like, in the vlog world, but um, said, fuck it. I'm joining OnlyFans. She made um, over a million dollars in 48 hours, and everybody was kind of giving her shit, though, saying the classic, like, you're just recirculating your... Only uh, your Instagram pictures. Mm -hmm. And I think she was doing a little bit more than her Instagram. 
But this is the way to do it, man, because first of all, there are guys, like, Glenny is obsessed with this girl. There's a million guys out there who are just going to be, like, happy to even be in the mix and maybe get, you know, okay, yeah, you were wearing that on your Instagram, but now I get to see, like, your your ass and wearing the thong, whatever. Something, like, basically like that. But then she announced, she's like, okay, I'm going to do a topless photo, and that was for DMs. That was for, like, separate money. And she made another 165 k just posting a picture of her tits, which, to be honest, I thought was low. I was, I was going to say the same thing. I don't yeah. Think and I think it was 20 bucks a pop. So that's what? That's only like, uh, uh, what, 165,000? So that's like 8,000 people, um, which is like yeah. not that many, but also maybe, you know, maybe she just posted it. This is time's like still going. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But I guess, you know, all things considered, though, it's a lot of money. And to be able to just be like, eh. I'm gonna I'm gonna show some nipples today and make, you know, almost 200 grand. That is I power, mean, man. That is. I mean, remember when Lana was like, "I can make a million dollars whenever I want." Yeah, that, yeah, th yeah. This actually really proves that because as as big of a star as this girl Corinna is, she's not even you know close to a Lana Rhodes. Oh, so if Rose. she can make 200 grand for posting nipples, if Lana's like, uh, "I'm gonna put stuff in my asshole," I'm surpri <laughs> I'm surprised it's only a million. So uh, hey. I mean, it, it is just. I know we've talked about it a lot there was that that was that there was that run of time where our, we were like strictly an only fans podcast but then that kind of died down and now i think there's this other wave of like wow this really is just like pretty common amongst every female influencer and they're just gonna all be fucking rich there's some girl from love island who like this girl from love island is on only fans makes a boatload of money she said she likes to get fucked eight times a day eight john eight I mean, well, yeah. I, I was like, what, do you, have, do you have four boyfriends? Because then, fine. Yeah. <laughs> then that makes sense. But if we're talking about one fella out there, you know, Godspeed to him. But she's, you know, she's hot. She's got a hot body, but she's nothing. She's like the girl from I mean, Love Island. Like, that, that's just not, like, that's just not true. Like, I like to get fucked eight times a day. Yeah, it's like, no, you don't. As a matter of fact, I feel like girls wanting to get fucked eight times a day makes less sense. Like... Guys, it's hard. We got to perform. But we, you know, if you can get it up, you can do it. A girl, like, eight times a day of just getting penetrated? That does not sound fun in, uh, at all. No. <laughs> like, I, I found that, you know, you, you can't even. You get that, like, I'm it. sore thing oh, every single day. You're like, yeah. Like, when, I mean, I'm sure that girls are mostly lying when they say they're sore. But he, let's say they're telling the truth. That's after, like, you know. One or two good sessions. Imagine eight. <laughs> you can't even fucking move after that. But uh, OnlyFans is trying to pivot to, like, regular content. I heard you say this the other day. It's like, brother, if it ain't broke, you know, they, they want – they the problem is when you – so I read up on it a little bit. They want to go public or at least get uh, – maybe not go public, but they want, like, infusions and, and, um, and investments from, like, venture capitalist groups. A lot of venture capitalists – companies say they do not engage in vice companies so it can't be gambling booze weed sex i don't know okay. if that's i don't know if that's a moral thing or if it's like a business thing like because of regulations that might come out and put an end to that business or whatever but they're like we can't raise the money that we want if we are like a sex worker platform but i mean that's gonna take a pretty long time to spin that <laughs> that's what i'm saying and what's crazy is they already make money so they made it was two billion dollars worth of content that went on in OnlyFans, which means it was a four hundred million dollar, four hundred million dollars of revenue for them. So like, Jesus, you know, a lot of these companies when they when they start taking on investment, they don't, they're not even like making money. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah. they're not even breaking even yet. Only I think fans, like aren't like Uber and Netflix? Don't they still not make money? Exactly. It's like you know the, <laughs> these these apps, social media, and, and and Uber and them. It's like yeah, we're not even turning a profit yet. We're gonna turn a profit in like year five. Well, OnlyFans has four hundred million dollars of revenue coming in. So let me you know if, if the venture capitalists won't invest, like yeah. come on over to Barstool, we'll fucking invest in you. So they're trying to turn it to like non sex work, and I don't know if you can stop that. I guess if you just kicked everyone off for showing their tits or having sex, but you do that. And you ain't going to have anybody fucking left. So OnlyFans. A lot of angry customers. Yeah. Do not bite the hand that fucking feeds you, you dummies. And same thing with Victoria's Secret. They, they, if it ain't broke, don't fix it with them. I guess it is broke. They're, they're not making that much money anymore. But they got rid of, like, hot chicks, basically. I don't know. I mean, I think that's unfair. I feel like imagine if you were a model just breaking into the game 
and you've starved yourself and worked out incessantly, and now you're like, bam, I got this Victoria's Secret body. I'm going to walk the runway next year, and they're like, oh, never mind. We got rid of this fashion show, and then you're like, all right, well, that sucks, but I'm still going to be in the magazine, right? Like, ah, no, never mind. We're going to put, like, athletes in there. Like, what the fuck, man? They're doing it with – it's it's with all of them? It's called like – the, yeah, the, the VS Collective is now, like, Megan Rapino. Um, the first transgender Victoria's Secret model girl. The there's like a, a skier like athlete kind of girl. There's um, Priyanka Chopra. There's definitely there's there's other girls who I think are typical model looks, but they're just um, all ethnic. So like there's this. It's like the Justice League of women, like the VS Collective, <laughs> um, and they're gonna like be the ones. They're not gonna be in the in the magazine. They're gonna do like podcasts and do appearances. So they're just trying to shift their image. But it's like. Damn man, like what we we can't even just have a standard for hot anymore. Like I get it, you shouldn't just because you're not like tall, skinny waist, big tits, and a fat ass doesn't mean you're not beautiful. So yeah, we should be more inclusive, uh, and like you could have all those people in your magazine or whatever. But we can't have the like Emily Ratajkowski body be like the desire. You can't pick what we want to be like desirable anymore. Yeah, it's not even like pick who you want. It's like at least to offer that as an option. Right, still. that's what I mean. Like, like, <laughs> like, like, still keep. Like, can we make sure we still have the fucking big titties? They don't have to all look like that. But right, they should still be represented. They're a body type. That's what I'm it's saying. True. It's almost like when people complain about like this is reverse racism. The white people aren't getting jobs. Imagine if if, if you're like a Victoria's Secret model like body, and they're like, now nah, we can't put you on the cover anymore. Like, well, Did what's you... the fucking point of look? <laughs> what now? Men want to fuck me? That's it. Great. Great guys are just gonna try to put their dick in me. That that was worth it. All this fucking work. So OnlyFans, Victoria's Secret, leave it alone. Um, voicemails today are brought to you by Shady Rays. I actually just bought two pairs of Shady Rays yesterday, and I use promo code KFC, and it's a bomb ass promo code because it cuts everything in half. I was buying two pairs for like ninety eight bucks, and boy, John, you look like you might not. You might die, brother. You might not make it. Is that what you were smiling at, Nick? Yeah. yeah. I have the Nick camera just, just smirking sitting on over him there. right now. <laughs> uh, I was going to buy two pairs. I bought the um, like the Eclipse Blue, and and then the one where it's like there's it's like one big lens instead of two separate lenses. Anyway, it said like ninety eight bucks, and with taxes, it was over like a hundred something dollars. I put in promo code KFC. Bam, cut it down to fifty four dollars. When you see that shit right. go from like one thirteen ninety eight down to fifty four bucks just because of KFC. Ooh, baby. It's a beautiful feeling. So you get two pairs for the cost of one, basically, now. So buy one, get one. A little BOGO action. Uh, yeah, you get two pairs for $48. That's what it was. So go to ShadyRays.com, promo code KFC. Also, they donate 10 meals to Fight Hunger. So you're helping out a uh, some people in need. They donated over $15 million. And they've just got dope sunglasses. They've got, like, very cool. They've got, like, classic looks. So they got, like, one that was, like, a classic look and one that was a little more, like, stylish. Which I think is a good way, you know, I'm always saying get a couple pairs because you might lose one. John's always saying I don't lose them, what are you talking about? But I do think a good idea is like get one pair that's just like an aviator look or a classic, you know, like black frames, black lenses look. Um, and then get something that's a little cocky. Get get out there with it. Get some get some frames that are see through. Get some uh, polarized reflective lenses. Get some color going. So shadyrays.com. Promo code KFC. Buy one, get one free. Two pairs for the cost of one. Just $48. Uh, ShadyRays.com with the best and newest shades. First voicemail. Let's go. Hey, KFC. This is uh, Kyle calling from South Dakota. Now I have a question. I'm in a bit of a dilemma here. I have a... Uh, I've been on this Tinder dating site. And I got two girls now that I'm down to fuck with. One's a construction worker. Super cute. The other one is uh, works for a marketing company, also super hot. I'm trying to figure out at which point do I choose the one that I want. How do I choose the one that I want is basically what I'm asking. Both of them are almost perfect. This is a deep question. They're both taller, good looking, successful. I'm just trying to figure out which one I should choose. Thanks, guys. I can tell that this really dude is a good guy. In this kind of a situation. The guy's a good dude. He so John, the question's pretty simple with a lot of extra details that weren't necessary in there. He's he found two girls on Tinder, uh, but he's dating them, both tall, pretty, good looking, successful, and he's just like, how do I? I like them both. Like, what? How do I pick between the two? 
and you know what what do I do and I think that that's a question that I think some guys who just like sleep around date around a lot don't really care they're just like I remember I was going through this before I got married uh, I was seeing two girls and one of my uh, a girlfriend just a friend who was in the crew was a girl she was like just keep fucking them just keep fucking and I remember her saying this because I think at this point she was just in party mode too she was like just keep fucking them until it blows up in your face like <laughs> she's like just keep riding that and then you know it, like we'll see where it lands and I remember being like fuck yeah wait no wait hang on <laughs> I was like I don't want it to blow up in my face but I do believe um this is where, like, honesty is, like, so clutch. Because I think if you're if you're dating both these girls and you like both of them and they like you and you're enjoying yourself, I think as long as you're just like, yo, I, I'm not going to be exclusive but, like, want to keep seeing you, I think you can just keep doing this until something presents itself, until you find out, oh, I don't like this one or this one really is the – or neither one or they dump you or whatever it may be. But I think as long as you're honest that you're not like sleeping around on anybody or leading anybody on thinking that they're already exclusive with you, you can just keep doing this until the decision is made for you. I, I agree. But, but it's I'm also – yeah. Um, never in a million years would I do that. Uh, dude, never. I, 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 it's like, so I, hard, dude. It's so hard. I remember being like, all right, once now that I'm single after my divorce, I'm going to just lay my cards on the table. If I got to hurt feelings, I'm going to do it. If I got to shoot myself in the foot, I'm going to do it. I will just be honest. And then as time got away from that and I just got back to my usual ways, I'm like, well, I, I don't want to upset her, so I'm not going to say that. It's Bro, just the I worst. Talk- I talk to a girl and I'm like, okay, well, we're dating, so I can't see anyone. Yes, else. exactly. Like, if I if I say hello to somebody, I'm like, oh, we're oh, exclusive. I have a girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and then just such like, a pussy. Totally, dude. And and honestly, it ends up being worse for everyone involved. It's not just like, oh fuck, I've screwed myself over. It's like now things are gonna be worse for her too because you're all mixed up. I feel like in the beginning <sighs> when it's like. Uh, so like where you know what'd you do last night? It's like no, nothing. I was just like hanging out home. I was just like by myself. Like I wasn't with anybody. Don't worry. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't want to upset you. I don't want to upset you. Please don't be mad. I, it's it's you know what it is. It's uh it's like PTSD, John, from from our past, where it's just like <laughs> being honest and open used to be awful for us for so many years with so many women, and I'm sure it was also our own our own shortcomings. But I really think that if you can do it, and you should be able to, because you're an adult and fuck it, girls are. Uh, they they want to be treated equally and they want like they want honesty too. So just tell both. Don't don't you don't have to specifically say like, hey, I'm fucking other people. But I think as long as you're honest, you can just do this until the op then until the answer like appears. But also understand that's much easier said than done. Next up. Hey KFC flights. <clears throat> so I was watching uh, this playlist on YouTube called Old Barstool. And so it's just all your, like, old videos before you made that, like, move to New York out of Boston and all that. And I was watching the Combine, the first Combine you did, and it is just a disaster. It's you, Dave, and Big Cat, and somehow you got Todd McShay out into, like, a field next to a graveyard. And you're doing all these stupid things, and, like, you see Dave uh, rig the entire Combine by changing the cones on the three cone drill and then running it and like beating the big cat's time easily just because he changed it and all that stuff and it's hilarious but i can never imagine you guys doing it now like you said you said you were 27 in the video so anyway my question i guess is with fights being there for a long time too what is the like one thing you're most like ashamed of from like old Barstool or maybe <laughs> your like best memory stuff. Dude, like so this guy just right, describes the entire combine, John. It, it, this dude just stumbled upon the first combine and he's like, he's like, you guys set up the cones and you were running and you're with McShay next to like a graveyard. It's a piece of shit. I'm like, yeah, man, it's, it's called the combine. It's like our most talked about piece of content ever. But it, re- <laughs> it really is funny how much people revere that stuff. And then it's like, if you go back and watch that, that video straight up sucks. <laughs> like that was, that was when Hank was, he lied and said he knows how to do this stuff. He like Chad McShay's mic wasn't turned on and our cameras were it barely was, working. And, it was Hank's very first day. Right. It was his first thing that he like ever filmed. So anyway, his point is like, he was like, I can't believe that you guys did this. I could never see you guys doing this now, which is, I mean, we did a second combine, but it was much more, 
you know, it was a sponsored content and it had everybody at the company. As far as just being like three guys out in a field fucking around, you know, it's certainly never going to be me, Dan and Dave doing those things again. But ultimately, the question, John, is uh, what's what from the old days of Barstool are you most uh, ashamed of and most uh, like surprised by like how much it sucked? Boy, I don't know. I mean, the combine was real bad for me. It was like that one. That, that combine actually was like problematic for me with like with work because everybody all of a sudden was like, you can't talk about, you can't criticize sports because you know you you can't play anymore. I was like, uh, okay. I mean, I don't know about what about like every other like sports analyst in the world who can't fucking you don't ask you know, Adam Schefter to go out there and fucking lift weights, do you? But uh, yeah. but I do remember that being like uh, I was like, yikes! Like I wish I wish I did not do this. So, like I I definitely took a hit on that. So I wasn't like ashamed of it, but it was like, that was, uh, I wish that didn't happen. Um, trying to think of content we did. That was like the hot dog eating contest. I don't know if it ever made it out. That was just embarrassingly bad. Um, anything that did it, it was just so bad. It was, it was not like ashamed of it. It was just like, boy, this sucked. I got mad because you kept thinking I was fake gagging. Yeah. And and as we know now, (laughs) he's not, he's not faking it. You're you're faking five. Like, no, I'm not dude. I'm trying to swallow a whole fucking hot dog. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm trying to eat a hot dog whole, bro. Calm down. Like, like, oh, a whole hot dog that's been sitting in the sun that's literally covered oh, in grass. Just Dilo scared. dropped it. Remember they were trying to get it like they were trying to get like the whole table over a fence. Yeah. And like, it just Not the tipped whole over thing. a fucking shitload of hot dogs on the ground. They just rolled around in the dirt and they just picked them back up and put them in the buns. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm I, definitely. <laughs> I, I'm definitely ashamed of like words I used to say. Yeah, like, yeah, that. But that's like that's more you know that the times changed. I, I, ashamed is not the right word, but I mean every time I had to do something athletic, physical, it was always embarrassing for me. It wasn't like ashamed of it. Um, like, dude, when that like Zola movie went like got announced, and then uh, my blog ended up being like on the like, front page of Reddit, so it was like it was like the number one story on Barstool for like a couple of days straight, and it's an article I wrote probably. Seven years oh, ago. Oh, the whore one? Zola's the whore? Yeah, yeah. it's like Zola and her whore friend. It's like, Jesus Christ, John, that's a little aggressive. But, dude, that, I mean, that, was, that's what used to... Was the whore. That, it was yeah, that, that was just a good descriptive it's, headline. That was that was the game back then. As a matter of fact, uh, do you see Dave, Dave's got a... <laughs> John, your pants are not even on. <laughs> uh, fuck that up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that was great! You're just rubbing your dick with your fly down, dude. You go, oh, I fucked that up, and you just made it worse and worse and worse, dude. Anyway, did you see Dave's latest beef? The guy who wrote like how Dave Portnoy became the face of the Republican Party. No. So th- some dude from like Politico wrote like an article. I love. On the one hand, I get Dave's point. He's like, you wrote this whole article, no mention about the the barstool fund no mention about what my actual politics is all this shit i also love the other side of it where dave is like surprised and or complaining that he's being aligned with republicans (laughs) (laughs) you talk to the president you go on fox news every 35 seconds like (laughs) you can't be surprised by this um but 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 he tweeted out the guy who who wrote the article and he was this dude who had like this comb over and these glasses and he wear this suit. He's really like weird looking. And someone tweeted, do not let KFC write a headline or a blog about this guy. And it took a minute for it to register for me what it meant. And I was like, yup. And I, and I, and then I looked at, I looked at the tweet and I was like, Hmm, what does that mean? And then I looked at the picture and I was like, if I wrote a blog about that guy, I would call him a pedophile. And then I was like, Oh, I get it. I get it. Yep. Yep. It made sense. All right. Let's do uh, one more voicemail here today. It's brought to you by all birds. I ordered my Allbirds, and I think they got delivered here, and I can't find them. We've been getting packages sent into this room, like, all day today. Like, they're just putting packages in the back room. Yeah, they, they've got to be shit. there, because I ordered a long time ago, and I got the ones that have, like, the Sherpa on the outside, which actually is good. I wasn't going to wear them during the summer anyway. They're, they're going to be from my Barstool Indoors line. They're going to be, like, my fall sneakers, my fall my fall clothes. Um but all birds, I, I got you know I got two pairs and I was ready to rock them all summer and I don't know, they got lost somewhere in the abyss here. I, I think I think when a package comes, wherever they just throw it. It's just like, like shoo, throw it up up the fucking stairs. That, and like it's in God's hands now. That room across the uh, across the hallway from our studio is just filled with packages. Filled and it's just like I hope there's <laughs> nothing in there like really important to somebody because Yo, there's a lot of them say perishable. <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> uh, but. 
you can get your Allbirds sent hopefully to the right place and you can start rocking uh, any of their their shoes. Now they've got slip-ons for the summer. They've got uh, like the the Sherpa type of like fuzzy shoes that I've got. They've got low tops. They've got the mids. They 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 are the quintessential like um, like functional shoe wear. You know, there's a reason why the the Silicon Valley's guys started with it. It's like when you're just trying to put on a pair of shoes that's comfortable, stylish. Uh, wear you know, rocking some white, black, gray. You know, the 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 basics. Uh, these are the shoes for you. Of course, they're all like futuristic and sustainable. Uh, it's you know sourced from eucalyptus tree fibers. They're sweet foam midsoles. We're the first ever carbon negative resin. Uh, it's 90% re re uh, recycled material for the packaging. So this is the shoe for the modern man or woman who's looking to like protect the environment, save some money, be stylish, be functional, and uh, and have some cool kicks. So uh, go to allbirds.com. It's a l l b i r d s dot com. Try the uh, tree runner. It's light, easy, and breezy. Uh, so give those a, a spin or get the perfect pair. Uh, you can ch check them out on the website now, allbirds.com. Last one, let's go. Hey, KFT, Spike, all the producers. Big fan of the show, much love from Canada. I got a question for you guys. What creature or organism or whatever that lives in the ocean would be the most terrifying if it lived on land? So if it was swimming in the ocean, it would fly in the air. On the ocean floor, it would walk on the water or walk on the sand. Um, my my pick for this is, this is a so hobbit easy. worm. These things are pure nightmare fuel. Do me a favor and look it up. A, a hobbit I, worm? Bobbit. Bobbit worm. So the question, John, is which ocean animal would be the, the scariest if it lived out of the ocean? So if it swims, it would fly through the air. And if it walks on the bottom of the ocean floor... It would just walk on the ground. He said a bobbit fish. Now, I don't know what that is. He says look it up because a bobbit fish is, like, absolutely terrifying. Um, bobbit worm. Bobbit worm, sorry. Worms are going to creep me out. Anything that's, like, slithery like a snake and, like, an eel. That yeah, this thing's got, like, a mandible on her. A fucking... Oh, yeah. I don't think it's that bad. If, if this was, like, a big-ass thing walking on... Oh, this is kind of... Like, it's like a snake. I mean, these things already exist. Yeah. It's like a yeah, gigantic like... centipede. This absolutely exists. Bro, the answer is a giant squid. Imagine a giant squid flying through the air. I, I was going to say just, just based on sheer mass, like a blue whale. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I mean, I guess a blue whale, it would be like a blimp, like flying through the air. Right. <laughs> but I'm thinking of an octopus, like 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 a Medusa almost. Like, I don't know. These wings are like the, the legs are all like wingy, and it's just like rotating and flying through it's got the suckers it's shooting ink at you it's eating you plus they say octopuses have like octopi got really good brains right they're really smart they have eight brains do they or they have eight legs they have eight brains too yeah, they have, there's a brain in each leg no way yeah so maybe they have nine brains i think i think they have a brain in the head thing i don't think that's gonna be a true statement i'm challenge throwing the challenge flag all right let's see I, um, i'm also curious if it's true how many brains does an octopus have you said that's so confident. Because I'm right. Let's see. Holy shit. <laughs> nine brains. Technically, you were wrong. You said eight. <laughs> no, yeah. but I said nine later. I went, so, I went, yeah, you did. It, it has localized and centralized control over their actions. So um, nine brains, three hearts. Oh, I didn't know that one. Wouldn't that be great? So some some octopus, octopus bitch breaks your heart. Like, I got two more, bitch. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> you ain't shit. Man, oh, nine brains. The, um, but, but there's also like, I, like the, I don't know the name of the fish, but there's like, there's plenty of things that would be horrifying. No. I just like that, just very scary looking. There's that one deep in the deep deep sea that Angler? has what? Anglerfish. Anglerfish. There's the one that has the uh, the the like no, it doesn't need any light and it's like translucent, but it has like the, it makes its own light. Is that what anglerfish? What, what about a shark? Yeah, like, a anglerfish has the teeth. That's like, oh yeah, I mean a shark would be pretty fucking scary. Like a shark, just like if it was just eating birds in the sky. Like it's raining oh, blood. Yeah. Just just chomping them out of the air. That's that's kind of the one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, pretty much shark is the answer for everything in the water, out of the water, whatever. They're the scariest fucking thing in the world. All right. That's it for voicemails. Feidelberg survived. We, we whipped through it for uh, for Johnny's sake. He made it. What a fucking hero. What a warrior. He only saw his dick once. 
<laughs> his eyes rolled back in his head, only ones. He made it. Let's talk to the boy, Will Compton, now. The busting with the boys. Well, half of the busting with the boy. So, busting with the boy, we'll call it. KFC Radio crossover. It's brought to you by Manscaped. I'm sure that Will Compton keeps it tight and neat. He's got those new pearly I whites. Tight, I, I cleaned it up the other day. Did you? Thank God. Thank God. Manscaped. I can't yeah. imagine how gross you look when you don't clean it up. You know, it's just got to be yeah. disgusting. Got to look like your face right now, all bulging and hairy. <laughs> I'm sure Compton, you know, he's got the baby blues. He's got those new pearly whites. He's jacked. He's got to keep it nice and uh, clean for the ladies, for the lady. Uh, so he's got the lawnmower 4.0. That's right, 4.0. Not one, not two, not three. We're going LeBron on them. 4.0. It's got the uh, the Nick proof technology. It's got the light. It's got waterproof technology, so you can use it anywhere on your body, any place in the bathroom. Uh, and you're never going to cut yourself, and you're going to get a nice, neat trim. Uh, they also got the ball toner. They've got the uh, boxers now that have moisture wicking. Uh, the weed whacker. For your ears and your nose, it's another trimmer that you can just jam right in those holes and trim up those hairs. The ball deodorant, the ball toner, uh, and a boxer a boxer briefs and the travel bag to keep it all in one spot. So everything you need from the weed whacker to the lawnmower, treat it like your front lawn and keep it uh, respectable so that when other people see it, they respect you. Go to manscaped.com. Use promo code KFC. Get 20% off plus free shipping. Escape the shrubs and the weeds this summer and shine with Manscaped at manscaped.com. Promo code KFC for 20% off. Will Compton on KFC Radio. It was a great life. That's the other thing, too. He's, he's it's rooms around. on Tuesday today. <laughs> <laughs> Did you microdose? I'm microdosing right now, yeah, man. <laughs> my man. I forgot to ask you. <laughs> yeah, I was walking to work today, and I just started smiling. I was like, I never do this. This is yeah. pretty good. And so I, you I, can I, feel it? <laughs> no, yeah, I mean. You never smile? <laughs> never smile. Just walking, no. I never, I'm never just like. Allegedly, I, you get yeah. better clarity. Yeah. You get a little upbeat tempo. I've had a pretty fun day today. Like, and, and it's amazing. By no what means is it like a trip or anything like that, but it's just like. It's and, like and a it's, micro version. It's definitely like a poly placebo, but it doesn't Who matter cares? anymore. Yeah. Is it a placebo? Is if it, it really works, doing it works. I remember uh, the first time I dabbled with that up at your place. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty nervous about that shit. So I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm in the right headspace, all these things. So they gave me like a little bit of it. And, and I remember his buddy who had, you know, who was kind of like full their, jar their of Sherpa of the yeah. whole thing. <laughs> Was like, yeah, I was, I was worried that you know maybe you weren't gonna get the experience, and then I looked over at you, and you were sitting Indian style on a tennis court, just staring at the light, going, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I guess I was feeling it. Same yeah. thing with me. I was like, I don't think I'm really feeling it, and then I realized I was staring dead into a light. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I think I do. I think I am That's feeling awesome. it. That's um, awesome. But yeah, man. Uh, so Will was supposed to go into all these meetings and basically blew them all off for content. <laughs> but not not by, not on purpose, but it was just like this ran late, this ran late. Dan, come on in and guilted would, me with this kid. Oh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, just do you know, just do mine first. It won't take long. You know, I'm trying to get total to Dan my kid. move. Yeah, like, I, I, can, yeah. I, can, I can hear the way he yeah. said that. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, the people upstairs were like, "What the fuck? What the <laughs> fuck is going on here?" <laughs> but I was saying it's all good because you guys are doing so well. I mean, I feel like busting with the boys has been. It uh, seems like it's doing all right. Yeah. You yeah. never kind of know. You know what I mean? You, you just don't. Because it's not like you have everyone's data to know where you actually are. You kind of just, you, you you, just look in rankings. I don't think people realize the, that. We literally do not like know. YouTube views. Yes. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's why things like uh, YouTube, Instagram, like where, where the views or the metrics are public. Right. It's nice because you know where you stand. A lot of yeah. times with the, all the stats behind closed doors here at work, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, like, how are we actually doing? Right. I don't know. But that's where I wish, I wish I used to walk in there going, I want $10 million a year because for all I know, I don't know, maybe we're the biggest podcast right. in the world. You never know. Like, yeah. All these deals everybody's signing these days. Yeah. I mean, Levitar, what was it, like? Dude, $50 million for $50 million for, 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 for three for, years. For, like, nothing really other than just... It's Licensing. Not, it's not like it's it's exclusive. Licensing the this, pod. This, yeah. Uh, his is not exclusive? It's like, uh, well, I think he has to exclusive. I meant, like... Not like uh, when you go to exclusive to Spotify and you're only on this platform. It was like they just have to work with DraftKings. Like, oh, really? DraftKings work with. There. Like they don't own the IP. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a three-year deal for 50 million. That's pretty nice. Yeah, some big numbers Is floating it? around, man. Were you guys um, were you guys a podcast like before Barstool and then like came, came aboard? Correct. Yeah. So we started in like late May, early June of 2019. And then we had gotten DM'd. Our busting account got DM'd by Gaz, got the it. old Gaz man. Yeah. So he's out there lurking. He's in the he DM'd probably, 
in July. Okay. So were you after after the were the, you planning on going somewhere? Like, was there chance? No, you were gonna go I, the first else? thought when you're starting a pod is you're just thinking like, no, we're gonna fucking do this all on our own. <laughs> yeah. Like, fuck yeah. everybody else. <laughs> Joe Rogan, man. And then it's yeah, like, oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Man. That's, <laughs> that's that fucking athlete confidence though, because my first thought when starting a pod is like, no one's ever gonna listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, it's got to mm, be nice, like. Mm. There, there is definitely like a pro athlete bump for sure, where you just gotta, you get like, you just have a little extra credibility. No know? doubt, like there, we knew that okay, we're one of the first in this space, like active NFL players having a podcast together huge. and just letting it fly. Like we're kind of saying whatever, mm -hmm. we're FaceTiming every night because we backlog probably five before we released one. We we're thinking, man, is this gonna be dope? Like, is this gonna be cool? Like, we were kind of thinking the same thing. Yeah. Like, if we thought if we got big, like, oh, we'll do this on our own. But we were also very like insecure and like. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna sound okay? Like, I wonder yeah. how people are gonna like it. You knew you would get the initial bump of people listening. Like, I wonder what is gonna come out of this. Yeah, you. Have, and I mean, then you it's probably every reporter probably like first thing they do is listen. First to thing, this, right? our sure. first pod, we had Delaney Walker on. He's talking about you know the organization talking about draft a tight end, and I'm like, fucking draft a tight end. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they yeah, grabbed yeah. that as a headline, mm -hmm. and he talked about getting an IV bag, and he felt like he was almost dying. So of course the headline is like, mm -hmm. NFL player talks about near death near experience, death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and that's on that's, you know. That's pro football part, talk like though. all that stuff yeah, and yeah. the next week Vrabel has a big team meeting I wasn't on the team at this point but obviously Taylor's briefing me on all of it and you know I'm like talking with Vrabel in the in the interim about it all and it's like guys look I want you all to go on this podcast I think it's awesome that they're doing you know what they're doing you just got to be careful because you're you're gonna have a microscope in these the media outlets like you know how it works like they're gonna take any bit you say and try to you know contort it around uh -huh. into whatever headline they want and it can make us look bad so just be cautious so i'm sure they're that, on the other and that's side that's what they like i'll be honest if i was a gm or an owner i'd be like nobody no you're not doing a fucking podcast are you kidding me we're, like somehow some way you're gonna get in trouble you're gonna say something they were just like you can do it but just be careful that was, that was not necessarily like i just want to do a podcast i was a free agent at this time right taylor had just signed the biggest o-line contract in nfl history right so this the the that line's already signed uh -huh. He's so like, there's gotcha, like bitch now i'm gonna talk into a microphone every week. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like you know it's not necessarily a guy you can just cut right because he's like a lead on your team yeah, he's got the leverage you're right. kind of just sitting in there you know tight right. asshole like man i hope please don't please yeah i hope this doesn't go bad but, but i also think that like yeah i mean you guys seem like trustworthy in, in a sense right you know? like I, it's definitely to risky you anything you're not right you know you but you also don't know what you don't know what you know what i mean like the titans the first year we went like i'm a free agent um on the couch, as they say, Taylor had just got popped for the his suspension, for mm -hmm. the PD suspension. So he's out the first four weeks. So we're steady doing podcasts. The Titans start off two and four. So when they're losing, they like, you know, yeah. I'm kind of, you know, I'm at home. Like, fuck, man, I don't even want to tweet about busting with the boys because people are just going to, you know, the whole shut up and dribble. Absolutely. Shut up and yeah, play football. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're losing focus. Like, you're mm -hmm. not this. You're not what's going hard. on? Yeah, yeah you're not yeah, trying yeah. to help the team. Um, so there's definitely some like, which is such a weird thing. Cause like how much, like, like, like totally. people think that like, I don't know. I guess people just think that athletes are doing something at all times. Like they're not human. To, to, people to, people to don't look at you guys like human beings. At, at the sport. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. like, yeah, they're 24 hours in a day. Right. Most of them I'm sleeping. A couple of them I'm playing football. And, a lot of them I'm eating. Also, like, a lot of them I'm talking. Right. And this time <laughs> yeah. I'm just talking. Yeah. I'm doing, I, like, I used to get mad though. So like, uh, people get mad about people tweeting. Like that's, yeah. like, like, what, that's what you what's doing crazy. on Twitter right now. Like, I don't know, being a fucking human being in 2020. Right, and somebody pops off to you like, oh, what are you doing on Twitter? Oh, what is this, your platform? What is this, uh, are you a professional tweeter? Is there only a certain type of people that can be on here? Right. <laughs> I used to get mad as a Mets fan when uh, things were going bad and Cespedes would just golf every day. And I was like, I get that you have all this free time in the world, but just know that there's going to be a huge swath of fans who are pissed off that you're basically doing another sport instead of the one over here. So, like, you can do it, but just know that there's going to be the consequences, For which sure. I think is probably a similar situation here, too, where it's like you can be on a much longer one, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all, I mean, you're on the sun, you know. You're yeah, working yeah. A little harder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for a guy who, like, was having problems, like, Tor, tor, yeah. you know, I'm like, this is like the last thing you should be doing. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's video like, games. I mean, guys play video games all up their thumbs, the time, dude. bro. Like yeah. all day long. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's more. It was more like let's get some of these conversations we're having in, in the locker room, in the hot tub, in the sauna, all that stuff. Like let's get them behind a microphone because we all talk about all these things, like aspiring, like to do business deals or listening to certain people talk, yeah. laughing at certain mm -hmm. jokes, bantering back and forth. So that was like the motiv motivation behind it. And it's, it's like you know, for Taylor. 
you show up and do it for like you know an hour. I'm I was the free agent. I'm some I was the person that's like, hey, I'll handle the I'll handle all the other shit, bro. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Just show up, do your thing, be entertaining. You yeah. know, we have our we have our friendship, and you know what else is he gonna do for that hour or two hours in a day? You can only that's work I mean. out so damn much. <laughs> right, right. You can only, only put so your life to it so watch. much. Yeah, yeah. How it's many, just like. Uh, not to cut you off, no, no, but on okay. another note too, like you go through college, right? And you're taught as a student um, to build your resume as good as you can. Mm-hmm. And when you're in one job, especially in the business world, you're looking for the next job. Mm-hmm. Like always start always setting building, yourself up growing, for plan B. Thank you very much. All that shit. Yeah. yeah. Always plan for the next step, the next stage. Be, you know, have a toolbox of a lot of things you can do. Be well versed in a lot of different areas, so you're not pigeonholed in one area. That's what you're taught as a student going through college in the business world. Yep. Adapting to all those things, and, and all of sports. a sudden, when it's a sport, you don't want them doing anything else other than their sport. Like right. what they they have interest in other things. Why can't they sharpen their tools there? Because the minute the game's over, that same logo that wants you to sacrifice everything for the team for the organization, for that logo, the minute it's over with, that logo is not making sure mm-hmm. you're laying your head stress-free at night, setting you no up way. with another job. No shot. They're not doing that. So you got to think like as an athlete about life after the game, what you're interested in, because once the rug gets pulled out from underneath you, it is stressful. Like I, I haven't tasted the other side of it yet. I'm fortunate to have built, started building Bustin' with the Boys. But that year that I was thinking about building Bustin' with the Boys, I'm thinking like, what do I want to do after football? Because I don't necessarily know. And life is going to hit me pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. And the minute you get on the other side of it, your jokes aren't as funny. You're not as good looking. Mm-hmm. You don't get to shake right, as don't many get that hands bump anymore. anymore. Yeah. You don't get yeah. to get in all these meetings. You're an ex player. Yeah, you're, you're a an former player. this. You're, you're a former player yeah. trying to get in the podcast. Right. You, I mean, you see it everywhere. Right. right? You know yeah, what I mean? the, that's why I said that earlier the active thing is so huge because there's plenty of people who retire or wash out or whatever, and then they try to recapture it. Capture it now while you've got it and kind of have them overlap a little. And it's a totally different game. Absolutely. And I'm not like diminishing like me being talented and like podcasting and doing entertaining and being a personality and stuff. like. I'm not like belittling that. But it's like at the same time, it's not like I'm some superstar player that is doing this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like that goes out and is on social media and doing these things. Like I, at the same time, you're like you're trying to be like an example for those guys who are – you know, not necessarily starters year in and year out mm-hmm. that can show that you can juggle a couple things and also be curious and be interested in something else. And especially a sport that can, like, bam, could be gone. You right. I mean, the violent sport, injuries, whatever, where all of a sudden it could be gone and you're like, well, and you're cut, you never get called again. Been, yeah, mm-hmm. it's not guaranteed. They'll, that same logo will toss you to the fucking curb as soon as, you know, you're not useful to them. And now you haven't been doing anything but that for five, six, ten years, whatever. It's crazy. It's crazy to expect people to just not be a well-rounded person right you know I mean? right Lots. i was on token and i was telling erica it's like you go 23 years of your life now obviously i didn't play football from like zero to eight but you go 23 years of your life to try and get drafted in a sport that lasts 2.8 years on an average Jesus career Christ, that's crazy. and the minute you're done yes i've lived the dream like i've done what my young self wanted me to do my entire life and that's play professional football i wasn't a running i wasn't the next walter payton but i (laughs) got to play in the nfl like i did it right and the minute it's over with like it's all i've identified with it's all all these players you're still your young self by the way you're not an old man (laughs) right you're a a little bit older of yourself that's really good (laughs) and like you know you identify with being an athlete your entire life and then when it's pulled out like it's just Everyone retires, right? Like in high school, you, you might retire after playing high school, and so you start figuring out sooner than everybody else like what r- what the real world's going to be. In college, you might be done after college. You start figuring out what it's going to be like, the real world. But when you if you're fortunate enough to play for a while, like you don't really know what the real what world is like is, yeah. until it just hits you in the mouth. And then right. everyone's like, I mean, dude, you, you were a player. Like, you'll figure it out. I'm sure you're doing well. And you kind of like a lot of the guys, they kind of just hide behind whatever they're saying. Yeah, I'm going to figure this out sure. and that out. They go lay their head on the pillow at night, and then you like, it's like what the fuck You're selling cars back yeah. in your old town. Exactly. Like, exactly I like the that. spin zone. That's why I retired out of high school. I want to get a head start I retired. <laughs> yeah, that idea, everyone retires. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I just wanted to get a head start with my real life. <laughs> right. <laughs> I figured it out. Young, man. When, when did, did you uh, – were you aware that you had, like, podcasting chops and – Entertainment chops, like you're probably like one of the guys, like the the clowns in the locker room, probably one of the guys who jokes around, kind of has like you know holds court or whatever. 
or it was yeah i enjoy doing though yeah, i enjoy like, ban- i've always enjoyed bantering like making people laugh like i always knew like i enjoyed just being in the social media space just because it was a way to like the way you think of things that think play on your head are funny yes you realize yeah. people laugh at them yeah. so you're like i you know you enjoy getting making jokes and people laughing like being on vine when vine was out yeah like i just love doing that kind of stuff and then so yeah you always gravitated towards it. i it gravitated always... podcasting was a way to like i was you know all the podcasts that everybody listens to all the comedy ones out there the joe rogan's of the world yeah ben greenfield fitness he was more of a performance guy but i just listened to podcasts all the time like when i was in the league like when i was on washington and i would just think to myself like man it'd be cool if like players had a podcast like if somebody had a podcast because i understood what we all talked about in the locker room and it's like i know people would would like Kill this to hear that, man. Yeah. but it's, i just never got out of my own way of doing it until i decided what well, till i was getting nervous like hey i'm later i'm late in my 20s in the nfl i was a backup and i was a special teamer my year with the titans i didn't get to play at all because nobody got you know fortunately yeah. but unfortunately for me no <laughs> one got injured in front of me to where i could play so i thought you know, I might not play again, maybe. So I need to start working on this thing if I actually want to do it. And Taylor's like, yo, I'll do it with you. That gave me all the courage in the world to do it because your boy's doing it with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and you swiped so yeah, it I, the boys' slogan, I, and there you go. You're good to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. Has, no doubt that Saturday for the boys' stuff. <laughs> has, anyone, has anyone in the league followed in, like, your footsteps? Like, are there other podcasts? There's some. There's more coming out. I was going to say, this, if not, it's about to be, man. Yeah, like, the, like you have trust levels with Cam Jordan and Mark Ingram. Okay. But mm-hmm. they – like the the ones who I've seen that have done it, they've been like seasonal. Like as far as I know, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I haven't looked hard enough. And they're seasonal in season or out of season? Uh, they were seasonal. They pre-recorded them and dropped them in season. Okay. But as so far as I know, those dude, they still right. just doesn't. That right. kind of starts to feel like like I, in this. Oh, I haven't listened to the podcast, so I can't really speak to it. But that almost feels like the weekly college football appearance like, for the coach on like on the local radio show, right? Where like he's not really gonna say anything. No, you know, like like yours yours has that almost air of air of uh, uncertainty where you're like yeah these guys just fucking shoot the shit like this yeah. is but when you're like it's pre-recorded preseason and we're gonna let it out in season doesn't work I, I also think just like there probably aren't many coaches who would let their players do this like okay. Ray, Rabel just wants to be in the energy he can't <laughs> wait to get fired <laughs> he just wants to- <laughs> dude he he's is using one- football to get to Hollywood <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah dude he Rabel- is one of the boys man yeah it's, it's honestly the perfect like storm I really like do you think Different coach, different city, different teammates probably doesn't all come together, right? Like very, I think there's very few uh, set of circumstances where this unfolds like as successfully as it did because for sure. But there's also like there's that side of Rabel that people don't get to see behind the scenes all the time because he's a funny dude. Like he gets to he's be in front of the camera. Like he, he's right? funny even when he wants to be angry. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, he's very a very focused individual and never wants anything to be above the team. Even though some things seem like they are at times, he does a great job of reeling everybody in. Like there'd be times last year, like my assholes tighten meetings because he's like, let's check on our fucking social media manager this week. And I'm sitting there like, (laughs) 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 and then like you'd you'd see him in the hallway, like when I was on practice squad. So then I would tweet a little more during the game Mm -hmm. and he'd be like, Hey, like, you know, I'm sure in his mind, like, listen, don't do stuff that's going to hurt the team. Like mm-hmm. just making sure my head's in the right space of, yeah. you know, not damaging the team or making anything about anything. And else that's a, it's obviously the, a fair war for right. the coach to have. But he's he sent me the funniest text I've ever got in my life. And actually not funniest, meanest text I ever got in my life. Where we were talking shit before the Pats game, Pats-Titans game. I was down in Nashville. And it was like, uh, I mean, you guys – Kicked the shit out of us. I think it was like the Pats went to win the Super Bowl that year, but it was like fifty to six or something. Oh, like that. that's in that's in two thousand eight. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Eight. Two thousand or eighteen. My eighteen. Fault, my yeah, fault. yeah, yeah. Two thousand eighteen. It's probably eighteen. When you guys came to the t- came to us. Yes. And it was like twenty one nothing right out of the gate. Like just yeah. kicked our ass. And we've been talking shit before the game, and then he sends me a gif, and it was just like it was a funny gif, and it was like I think it was like it was a like Doc Holiday and Tombstone or whatever. And it's like I'm here, Huckleberry. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's a great gif. I got to give it to you. And he just goes, yeah, I can do your job. You can't do mine. <laughs> Dude, he's got it, bro. You like, got to come correct around Braver. I was like, all right, I mean, what the fuck is that, bro? Because even as a player, like, he played 14 years. He's won three Super Bowls. So what are you going to tell him yeah, like there's, that he there's, can't just jab right. at you about? Like, I'm better at your, you. Again, you, I can do your job. Like, I think yeah. that dude can suit up right now. Right. You know, right. I, I remember thinking that, like, especially when the Jets were at their low point. I'm like, can Braves still play, man? <laughs> <laughs> can you throw a helmet on, brother? We <laughs> sure could use you. You're I'm a Jets fan? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, tough. Yeah, man. It is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so genuine. It's so genuine. So you, you, like, you were reaching 
reaching for water bottle and you like pause. Like it hit you like a ton of bricks. Like, oh, Jets fan. Mm-hmm. Ugh, yeah. And you know what happened? I don't know why. I, I was like looking through my Instagram and I was swiping through like old videos of mine and the the, the goddamn Jets episode right after they won the game to like lose the Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes. Mm. And I was like, this is the worst, you know, for a team that has never been to a Super Bowl and, 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 and really not done much in my lifetime other than a couple of AFC appearances, that was the biggest game yeah. of my life because <laughs> it was like we might set up the next 10, 12, maybe 15 years. Right. And we lo- we won, so we lost. <laughs> and, I'm, and I was just so, I was like, this is the worst thing that's happened to me as a Jets fan ever. <laughs> But it's Which so is, backwards because, like, the Jets win. Game. Yeah, we <laughs> won. Like, how fucked up is your life as a fan that the worst thing that's ever happened to you as a fan is that your team is a night that your team won the game? <laughs> that's you, how warped being a Jets fan is. Do you hope this? Do you hope that Gary V is one day the owner of the Jets? I, yeah, listen, I, I. He said, yeah, listen. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> Gary, I love to death. You've had him on the show. I'm, I, I drink the Kool-Aid sometimes. I think. And, and and he's a real fan, so like I like that when someone's like really invested. It's not mm-hmm. just like I'm a billionaire and this is one of my assets that I play with. You know, he would really really invest it. However, he also sat down when we signed Adam Gase, and I was like, bro, like what are we doing signing Adam Gase? And he was like, what? I mean, what did he say? I he forget was like, what he said, but he I was like, he's right gonna be like face. the offensive guru. He's gonna be like coach of the year. And Feidelberg literally cackling in this man's face, <laughs> like you're a fucking idiot. And I remember thinking, I was like, bro, like I, I, and he knows, you know, he knows so much as a fan. Like he knows everything about the team and everything. And I'm like. And I'm like, how could you possibly fucking think Adam Gase is a good idea? Like, <laughs> yeah, we like were... this is a cut- so so. I wanted to be the owner. This is a Super Bowl in Atlanta. Maybe, yeah, yeah. So this Atlanta. is like yeah, this. You said you drink the Kool Aid yeah. sometimes, like that was a like a default. I think everyone can use some Gary Vee Kool Aid. Absolutely. And, like, and, and, dude, I, I, I understand. I it's you. You got to mute him. Like because it's very overbearing at times on social media. But if you understand the game he plays, and the brand and, he's trying to build, yeah. And, like, and he but also what's his, is very what's his, like open. viral TikTok right now. Oh, it's unbelievable. When he's like the shooting the, the, face. Shoot, the, shoot in the face. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, like, what, what's, what's, the, what's the most important thing in your life? Your family, right? Now imagine if one of them died. Imagine if one of them got <laughs> shot in the face. He's like every day, sit there for an hour and think of them getting shot in the face. I'm like even well, he says sh- they're in their shot in the fucking face. Shot in the fucking face. Just with a straight face. But that there's there is I don't see enough of him. As you two do to know, but I, I see that and I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? And are I like, we doing and like here? I, I've met Gary like three times. Like I, we have fun on the show, but I see that and I'm like, wait, is that what he says all the time? <laughs> he, I think he used to actually literally say that. That was like his. He would say that at multiple like conferences or whatever, and then it started to be like a joke, and he was like, all right, I gotta stop. Yeah. Like, like people are laughing at me about this, but you know, someone who's that successful, who's that kind of corny, but also will say shoot in the fucking face, and is a diehard sports fan and all these things. Uh, yeah, I think I think drinking the Kool Aid on some of those things is important sometimes. Yeah, yeah every now and then, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Are are you um, are you feeling the in the rest of your life socially, whatever, like the bussing with the boys bump? Is there like a are you like now an entertainer kind of like other guys in the league, <laughs> the guys, the girls, the family, friends, work? Is it now like you know? People know who you are because of this. Show. I'm more recognized for busting with the boys than I yeah. am than I ever have been in football. Well, but, but that's also, <laughs> maybe I, maybe when I was on Washington, and I was like the starter and stuff. Like yeah. I would get recognized some, but like. But honestly, bro, even forget about your like the sport of football in general is a very like anonymous one in a lot of ways. Right. Like really, only the cream of the crop is getting recognized on a on a daily basis because you're wearing helmets and because there's so many players on the team. You know what I mean? True. You'll I guess stand if you're out more in the city, like yeah. in the town that you play in. You go viral more on for this kind of shit and people see who you are. You got those baby blue eyes. Yeah. <laughs> These so nice teeth. Yeah, you guys don't yeah, even no. know those me teeth, and my old teeth. Dude. I don't know if yeah. you've seen them. Oh. Boy, you, uh, you look like you were chewing on rocks before. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, how new were these? You had those early stage Jenna Hayes teeth. Dana B, small chiclets, spaced out a little bit, chipped. I didn't wear a mouthpiece. Like, wow. You wear a mouthpiece? No, What are you, man. crazy? This is where I'm tough, because communication. You want to communicate. And every time I found myself doing it, I'd be spitting my mouthpiece out. Well, I was going to say, and then, then you're, you're sitting there, your teeth out. You're sitting yeah. here doing this before the play starts, yeah. and you know. I, I do actually, I, I never really realized that most, not most, but some players don't wear mouth guards. And I've definitely thought that watching a Pats game, being like, is Hightower even wearing a mouth guard right now? Or you see a lot of linebackers Brady? that don't. And, you don't mm-hmm. and then people don't just, or they do, just regularly get their I teeth found, I found out. some that were, uh, that are, uh, that are bottoms, and they just don't get in the way of the front, so you're able to talk more. When so. did you get these new choppers? 
two years ago. Yeah. When I got the new teeth, look, when I got fresh. the new teeth is when I looked into protecting them. <laughs> 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 but yeah, bro. I mean, mm. we were down in uh, Mexico, and I was going back to get a cigar, and this group just yelled, "The boy." <laughs> And they're from like Minnesota, Arizona, and I'm like, what the mm-hmm. fuck, dude? Mm-hmm. That was probably the first time where I was like, oh, this bustle with the boys. Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, 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 there's a little something to this. I always mm-hmm. hear uh, Burt Kreischer loves you guys, dude, and he's always shouting you out and always talking. And and obviously it's a great show, but but I think you know the allure to him of current players and guys who are in the league and all that. It's just such a rare thing that you can be active and be a player. And also have the chops to talk, and and so like, and when guys like that are co-signing you, and you can hear it, he's like, he becomes like a, a football fan. He, I, mean, I mean, he wears the stool, he, he, he wears the barstool yeah. hoodies on his he's show. He's always like, oh, busting with the boys. It's like, you know, he, he he fanboys about it, and so it's weird because in you know, you're in his world, and he's fucking, they're up here, you know. But then he's thinking about you in your world where you're up here compared to him. And Isn't it's that like, fucking nuts, dude? It's crazy. And at the same, it's like all in the same breath. It just gives you perspective that we're just all fucking humans trying to figure it mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. And we all get fired up. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like your one minute man stuff. Or people talking about fights. Like when we signed here, it's like I knew Barstool for sure. I knew the, the, the big names and stuff like that. But once you like once we signed on, I'm like, all right, I want to get to know everybody. I want to try and follow everybody. I want to try and say what's up. Like, mm-hmm. you know, slide in the DM. Hey, welcome mm-hmm. aboard. What's up, man? How you doing? And like, you know, in our world, you're going into this Barstool world and you see all these people. Like, we had Dana B on the pod thinking like he was the man. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you like, which is fucking <laughs> way, which is hilarious. It's the same reaction every time when we talk about that. And it's and he's the don't get me jobs. wrong. Dana B is he's the man. man. He is the Dana man. Dana B is the man. He's but just, just not, but he's the not man. the man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but it's just all perspective, right. man. Like we're it's all so true, we man. all just kind of well, want to fit and, in and with each other. Especially here, though, Barstool, you are either uh, to to certain people, you can be like the most famous person or an absolute fucking nobody. You know, and right. you meet some guys who are like, you know, they they will like fall to their knees for Dave Portnoy and Dan and shit. And then, you know, you, you talk to their girlfriend or one of their other friends. They're like, who, who the fuck is this? It's, it's like wild. the only Dude, thing. I, had I think this. it's the only thing where you can get that famous and that much notoriety, but also be completely like nobody even knows. Who the, you know, if you make it in movies and, and, and uh, music and shit, Everybody kind of knows you. In this world, you might be... Okay, I'm going to tell a story that I've been too embarrassed to tell, but you kind of... Yes! Gotta, yeah, yeah, let's go! Open the window for it. Yes. Dude, so we're doing the Borelli's things, mm-hmm. and we're doing the streams and all this shit, and this, I was going to the bathroom, was coming out of the bathroom, and this kid in a fucking spitting chicklets jersey with two earrings and a nose ring and this like slick back hair goes, hey, man, hey, you know, I just want you to know I respect you. And I was like... All right. Well, why, okay. Like, what are you talking about? John, he's like, I don't even respect me. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, it's just like I don't know. Like, no one's around you right now, and like, you know, like I've seen you on the Spit and Chicklets page. Like, I know, I know you're somebody, and like, it's okay that like no one's here right now. I was like, bro, I just walked. I, I was like, I just walked. I tell you, I, I didn't say anything. I was just like, oh, cool, thank you very much. And I walked away like a little fucking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but now that we have mics right here, we yeah, can talk yeah, about yeah. it. <laughs> but I was like, I, was like, I just walked out of the bathroom, and I'm not on spitting chicklets, so that's why you don't see me on the spitting chicklets thing very often. <laughs> you goddamn idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that, that guy has no fucking clue. He didn't know, like, he didn't know my name. He asked my name, and I went, "I'm gonna catch you later. <laughs> <laughs> I will fucking see you later, buddy. <laughs> I don't need your respect." <laughs> Stoolies are crazy, man. I'm telling yeah. you. People, well, mm. In your experience, are like uh, football fans of a team crazier, or uh, are Barstool fans crazier? It depends. Like, are we on the internet? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, know, I guess even like those the, are like, comparable too. But yeah. like, you know, it, it can get pretty ruthless out there, no matter where you're at. Yeah, you know what I mean. I feel like, like would you rather more... be, uh, you know, on the field having like, you know, on an away game having crazy football fans chirp at you, or like, you know, get a bombarded on Twitter with hate? Like, is, Probably... the, is it the in-person hate or the? I feel like I know, hates if I was better. you, I, in-person yeah. hates better because you could like at the end of the like, day, you, go you to could a... beat the shit out of all these guys. Yeah, because <laughs> when you go but, to uh, feel, when you go to Philly 
and you 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 know you're playing for Washington and they just hate the shit out of you, dude. And they're just cussing. You're low key like, yo, we're in it, bro. Like, yeah. this is it. <laughs> this is like trenches. this is but like also, this is like peak NFL story you want. Like they just fucking hate you, bro. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. But when you're reading stuff about yourself on the internet and then your you know your insecure self they, comes and they out. They know just what to say. Yeah, and your insecure like your teeth self are out, gross. Yeah. And you're like, fuck, they are, man. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, damn it. <laughs> and then your insecure self is thinking like that your boys might be reading and everybody else is reading the yes, same comment. Yes, like, man, yep, I wonder if yep. everybody thinks that way and yep. he's just the first one that was courageous enough to fucking hate on me <laughs> yeah you know, what, you know I mean? what i you know what goes through my head i've seen like somebody chirps at me and other people will notice it but they'll bring it up being like yo can you believe that like that dude said uh that like your podcast is a failure whatever like like almost like i saw that person hating on you and it's so wrong and such a joke that i'm bringing it up to you right mm -hmm. but then when you're getting hated and nobody brings it up to you that means that, like i'm thinking in my head they're reading it and being like yeah that guy's right but also, you know I mean? like, yeah, like, whatever. But maybe whatever they don't even fucking see it. Yeah, that's all. Right. I'm like, well, I'm core mad when right. they see it. Like, of course, right. don't right. talk to me about that shit. Yeah. That's fucking my. Don't you fucking go through my mentions. That's fucking my business. <laughs> yeah. You fucking deal with your own shit. Yeah, <laughs> you deal with your six followers. Leave me the fuck alone, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and the dudes who are rooting for you too, like they're not going in and fighting. That's just not fighting. No. So you know what I mean? Like, Everybody hates, but nobody like defends. Everybody. Right. It's so easy to be negative and not easy to be positive. That's why I do always show love to people who like go out of their way to like defend or to say like. Like, you know, what up? I like your shit because it's just so much more. Uh, although, do you guys get a lot of hate? Every now and then, for I sure. I could see Bustin being, minus, like, some football fandom, I could see you being one of the most universally loved shows at the podcast on the, on the, at the roster. I mean, we, because we have those, but you also have people who, are, you know, who aren't about it. You know what I mean? Like, people that'll try and um, at and say, like, the For the Boys things, like, overplayed, stuff like that. Yeah. But you just know, like... All Fuck right. off! Right. Yeah, like yeah. you get a lot of, you know what I mean? Um, like, you get you a lot of like, like I can't that. believe, like uh, other journalists and other outlets and football people would be like, I can't believe you associate with Barstool. You get that shit? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That, that, that would when, be the when one they were, thing when I they could were coming see. after y'all last year during quarantine. Oh, forget it. I'm forget talking it. people. I can't believe you're with them. I, I got, I can't. I respect you guys, but I can't listen to you guys anymore mm -hmm. because it's the yeah. Barstool logo. I never got that though. It's like. It's like, you know, you never uh, stop listening to Pardon the Interruption on ESPN because the executive at the top got in some trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's only Barstool where it's like one person represents everybody. For sure. And not only – it's stupid for other reasons. It's like you're just misguided. But even if you really had a beef with my shit, why does that mean you can't listen to your shit? Fuck that. Right. It's and so like stupid. Dave said it too on the pod. He was like, okay, I like spitting chickles, but I can't listen to Barso. I like busting with the boys, but I can't listen to Barso. I like KFC Radio, I can't listen to Barso. <laughs> all of a sudden. I like, I like, it's like you're listening, yeah, you're listening to yeah. all Barso. Yeah. But because like you guys are so uh, polarizing on the internet, yeah. whether it's good, bad, indifferent, all that stuff, mm -hmm. it takes from all different angles. It just kind of it's just like a melting pot. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, man. But you guys really did a great job of um, there are certain people who show up, uh, who get you know, they sign up and they like ingratiate themselves and take the time to like send a DM or say what's up. And then there are people who are, are, are probably there are people who are probably like kind of assholes about it. There are people who are probably just more like quiet and reserved and feel like maybe they don't know if they can reach out or whatever. And then right. there are people who just make sure that they like let it be known. And you guys were great about that. Like, yeah, both it, both of you being like, you know thanks and let's do this and like excited and shit so it's camaraderie it, dude yeah and that's probably comes from you know being on a, on a team and knowing how that all works but i never like from the jump because i'm always a little skeptical and there's always a little bit of competition there's always a little bit of like sizing people up when they come no, in. My, yeah and from always. jump street you guys i was like they're good they're in you know yeah they're cool yeah you do too it is you kind of like you know, you want to posture and see what's definitely. Going it's like <laughs> you bet. Oh damn, they're in the space now too. Like it's with us too. Like I'll watch I Am Athlete and I'm just like fuck. Like <laughs> Chad Johnson, they got Ocho Cinco on that yeah. thing. Yeah. Marshall, like right, they right. got some good stuff going on. But you like, you just realize like talk with uh, Brendan Schaub. I don't know if you guys have yeah. had him mm -hmm. on and stuff, but Schaub's like, bro, there's so there's there's so many eyes and ears out there. Like there's enough for literally everybody. Mm -hmm. He's like, that's how we do it they out in LA. We ju we just cross promote everybody everywhere the through Rogan, through Fighter and the Kid, like the Burt, like all the comedians just live in this universe, kind of like the Marvel universe. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's like there's so many eyes and ears. Like there's enough for everybody. That's yeah. the the LA the West Coast vibe is something I I said I always wanted here. Where like my dream would be to try to be like an extremely poor man's version of Joe Rogan. Where it's right. like you come through here as a comic and we try to put you on and get some eyeballs and then we all cross promote. Cause that they but the thing is they're all they all eat. They all got their money. They're all pretty successful. So they're okay with like you come on my show, I'll help you out. I hope you blow up. Cause I've already kind of blown up, you know? Yeah. In New York it's still comics are like cutthroat and like 
well, if you blow up, that means I'm not blowing up and the competition is still so crazy. But I think if people got over that, that's when you. No doubt, because uh, there is there's so much to go around. And it's like. I hope that happens with sports. I hope like and I hope there's more football podcasts and you guys will be like the OGs of it. Oh, that but everybody, would be sick. you know, collaborates. Like, let's all get paid, man. Right. Like, yeah. just create this universe of everybody mm-hmm. going in and out. Like you say, cross promoting. I think it's a. Uh, I do. I love that vibe. I love that West Coast vibe that you're talking about too. Because I, it's like those are the podcasts I was was like listening to that got me going on this yep. whole podcast train. And you, uh, you and and Taylor were boys before all this, like always. Yeah. So like, we. Um, so it's funny. Like Taylor's very much, like uh, it happens fast. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He got married in five weeks. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> so I was everything like, he does, he like best friended me in like a few weeks. You wow. know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we were uh, we were at like, we were eating breakfast together when I just got there because I was like a new face with the Titans. And there was a few of us that like would get breakfast together and Taylor was one of them. And we were actually, we were actually like going over, I guess bonding over like a Joe Rogan episode that had came out. Mm-hmm. And I was talking, we were talking about like Ben Greenfield and then like, you know, it's, <laughs> this sounds so corny and gay, but like, uh, <laughs> hey, it's, it's all, it's, it's all good. I went on, I went on Pat's podcast. That's all I can say that. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we were, we were kind of billa buddies, like in the sauna, the cold tub, stuff like that. Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> it so, sounds so, such a bromance. It happened yeah. fast. Yeah. And then we went on a, the Titans podcast together, and we just kind of became like best friends very like Step very brothers. fast. Yeah. yeah. You just become best yeah. friends? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm and, glad he has one because I got beef with Taylor. Why is that? I got found out about it this morning. Oh, this morning. Yeah, this is I, breaking. I just, just learned about it that I have beef with Taylor. Do I know this one? Nope. I didn't tell you either. Um, I was uh, I Saved was it. leaving the my apartment, and my girlfriend asked me what was on today. And I was like, oh, I'm interviewing one of the guys from Busting with the Boys, and I got this and this and this. And she's like, oh, I know Busting with the Boys. Uh, Taylor Lewan's on. That's on his podcast, right? And I was like, I was like yeah. How the fuck do you know what that is? Uh-huh. And her friend lives in Nashville, and she was seeing a player on the Titans, and she went down to stay with her. And then she's like, she's like, you know who you should DM? Like, he's really hot. You should DM Taylor Lewan. And so my girlfriend did and then looked at his profile and realized he was married and deleted it quick. But then the player she was seeing on the Titans was like, oh, no, Taylor already saw that. And she's like, wait, why'd you have me send it? And I was like, so you DM someone at my goddamn company and I'm just finding about it, Damn. I'm finding out about it right now. Damn. <laughs> so slid in Taylor's DMs. Yeah. And but he, he saw it. he didn't reply. He didn't reply. So but he, but he, said, apparently he didn't like see it. Sounds like you got me with your girlfriend. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we, you're we, misdirecting we, that anger. We, we, were, we were not dating at the time. I don't actually have beef with anybody. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she told me that this morning. That is funny. <laughs> what would, so oh what makes God. you bring it up right now? Dude, what like, right if? For today, come on. Dude, I'm, I'm going to the big game. I gotta right. hear about this. <laughs> what if? Imagine if Bustin' with the Boys started and and like and if Taylor was still a single guy and he had banged your girlfriend. <laughs> what would you oh, do? That would be so tough. What man. if it was like, yo, what's up? Like we're the new guys, like Bustin' with the Boys. Wouldn't be and, doing this and, fucking interview right now. <laughs> <I'm telling you. laughs> Hello, imagine darkness, my old friend. It just zooms out. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. Like Taylor's one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Definitely wouldn't want him banging my girl. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, not a, a, it's not a guy you want beef with. Yeah. <laughs> I just picture him drinking through the fish, banging your girl. Like, ah, nope, don't want you on top of her. Yeah, Damn. just crying at home That's by yourself. A, that, like, fuck, I can't do nothing. <laughs> yeah, it is like, what am I going to do? Yeah. We, we, we had this, this discussion recently. Like if, uh, if like a big athlete were to, you know, hit on your girl, grab your girl, do something like – there's nothing you can do about it, man. <laughs> you can't stop it. You know what I mean? So, hey, man. Hey, she's taken. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah but who? Oh, me, I, I don't know. Five some some dude, he's here, though. <laughs> he's here. He's out there. So you don't want to see you. Dude, and I would be like, yo, huge, can I get man. the house key back? I'm out. <laughs> 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 Clearly, I'm, I got nothing to do here. I'll go home. Actually, you know what? You keep the key. You let yourself in whenever you need to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I give Taylor my key. I was going to say, just take over, dude. Yeah. Just slide in. There's nothing I can do here. I, I love it, man. Well, Boston has been a, a huge, huge addition to the team, and you guys been great about it so uh and and carrying the for the boys torch man it's it's been great dude i saw that five-year post (laughs) that's a banger post bro yeah man getting all those guys a lot of history there i love leading off with fucking slick willie yeah he's a murderer by the way (laughs) (laughs) he kills people adam sandler was uh yeah yeah, sandler was in that sandler Sandler had a bunch sandler like was holding signs about it i think dude you i mean that was that's a quick video but like yeah if if we were to compile all of them i mean there was a period of time where it was like name a celebrity they've said for the boys at some point yeah it's wild so that's got to be sick right 
It's fun. Yeah, were you, it's awesome. Were you, were you the, uh, were you the like, he was the creator? one. Yeah. He was the one. I was. And yeah. you're crushing it with the one minute, man. Trying, I'll man. tell you what, and this is going to be funny, uh, how oblivious I am to, like, any negative comments out there. I didn't know you had haters until the Dave Portnoy, oh, hey, oh, until oh. The Dave Portnoy episode comes out. Oh, yeah. No, no. Didn't even know. There's the, plenty haters. That was, yeah, we, we, I was talking one minute about man when, just, when Dave mentioned me as in the top, like, the top first five. five. Oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it ended up being the most hate I've ever gotten because people were like, why the fuck is he in this list? Yeah. <laughs> comment after comment you're just like what the fuck yeah, that was, what's going on with you to make I, you hate I, I was like oh wow that's pretty flattering Dave like, <laughs> Dave, like didn't completely forget about me and everything I've done here and then the rest of the day I was like I wish you didn't say that I wish, you didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish I was top six I wish I was on the just punishing yeah. yourself <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah man it, it's it's been great well, uh, run next door and do it to the internet real quick yeah <laughs> alright let's do it you want the good news or the bad news? Well, you want the good news or the bad news? Uh, I always go good news first. All right, the good news is when we started this shit, only 10% of people watching our YouTube videos were subscribed. And now it's up to 40%. So that's almost like a 50-50 split. That's a 30% increase. A little math for you. That's, that's the good news. Too much math for me, but it's good news. You know what the bad news is? That still means 60% of you motherfuckers aren't subscribed. It still it's means good the thing majority. I asked first, because that would have been backwards. That would have been terrible, yeah. yeah. Imagine if I was like, well, the good news is... It's, it's good yeah. thing I no. fucking go good news first. 60% still just freeloading off of our videos. And guess what? It's YouTube. You're all freeloading. It's not... We're really all, the only cost is to push the fucking button. Just push it. Push the button. Push it. Push it real good. Push it dun, real dun, good! Dun, 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 dun,